What's going on, everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now, and today we are going to talk about the cost of living in Arizona. Uh, I'm going to share some personal experiences as I'm trying to look for a house, some of the challenges that I'm coming up against, but also some of the pros that I'm also discovering about looking for a home right now. In case you guys are wondering, this area right here is Rio Verde. I figured I'd show you guys this area because it's kind of a hidden gem in the Phoenix metro area. This right here is actually the Verde River. And in the background there, if you look right here, that's Weaver's Needle and there's Four Peaks. Uh, this area is actually beyond uh, Scottsdale. So if you're looking for a cool place, uh, kind of out there uh, where there's property, you might consider this area. You can see it's even fairly green. But this area is looking towards the Matazels. So anyways, let's dive in here and take a look at cost of living as we continue to show you uh, this aerial shot that I got on my drone. But yeah, this is Rio Verde. So uh, if you guys are new to living in Arizona now, you guys can subscribe and keep up with us on uh, this channel here. We've got plenty of videos that you'll wanna watch. Uh, Off-roading is are probably our most popular playlist that people like to go through and they watch every single one of those videos one after one because they want to know where are the cool places to go. And then for those of you who are looking for the small towns, they also watch each one of those as they familiarize themselves with the small towns around Arizona. So we're going to talk about the beast known as inflation in this guide. I also talked to my brother who's a real estate agent. I said, hey man, tell me what's going on um, really in the market. And he said, you guys can contact him if you have any questions also. I've pinned his link to the top of this uh, chat and I also put a link in the description. You guys can call him and ask him some questions about uh, what his, just pick his brain. I mean, uh, I don't know if he's gonna, get, I don't know if he's gonna get too mad if you guys blow up his phone, but um, you should be able to uh, ask him enough questions, uh, but hopefully he doesn't get mad at me if his phone blows up from this chat. Um, but you know, he said you guys can contact him. This is actually the website, findscottsdale.com. Just tell him that uh, Jeff sent you, right? <laughs> anyway, let's get into this. Uh, so we've been uh, taking a look at this calculation on the inflation calculation calculator. This is U.S. inflation overall. If you uh, were to take $1 in 2018 and put it here in 2021, it's about $1.11. That's a 10% cumulative inflation. If you just take the year 2000 and you calculate it, uh, $1 is now worth 161. So for every dollar that you had in savings in 2000, you've lost value about 61%. Uh, that's a, that's pretty bad. That's not very good return on investment in the span of 21 years. So uh, now that we know that the American economy and global economies love to inflate, uh, pretty much savings is not where it's at. So on this in this particular instance, uh, owning a home actually works to your benefit. Okay, so uh, with inflation baked in, yes, you have it's high cost of living right now to purchase. But if you live in a home for 20 years, the inflation actually works to your advantage. If you're trying to buy, the inflation works against you. So sometimes it's just better to get in there and buy and lock it in. And here's some of the benefits that I uh, rationalized and came up with between a conversation with my brother, because I'm thinking about buying again right now, right? I said, what are some of the pros of buying right now? Well, one he said was um, the market is, is expected to more than likely uh, continue to rise and some analysts, not him necessarily, but other analysts have suggested that it should continue to rise at 18 to 20 percent over the next couple years in value. So keep that in mind. I see you guys in the chat. What's going on Kimbo Jan? What's going on AJ, Christian Smith and Proverbs 31? What's going on and Rick Smith? He, I'm going to be say what's up everybody where you guys are tuning in from. David Chan says update video from uh, Chandler. Also, I want to give a shout out to uh, Aloha Star or Coffee Farms. They reached me, out to me on Instagram and uh, they actually sent me this coffee. Fresh coffee beans from Kona, Hawaii. So if you guys want fresh coffee beans from Kona, Hawaii and you like to support uh, people who are very nice and friendly, uh, they reached out to me and they, they, just, they didn't ask for anything. They didn't ask for a shout out or nothing. And so I was just like, well, wow, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll shout them out anyway. Aloha Star, they actually gave me two bags. I don't know how much it would cost, but I used to live in Kona, Hawaii, and I know that the coffee out there is some of the best coffee you can get. It's called Kona Coffee. So anyways, 
as we're looking here at the inflation calculator, I'll also go through here and just leave it here so you guys can see what videos we got on there if you want to look at that. But also not wasting money with no equity. So I'm paying $2,400 a month. That's money that's not going to come back to me in terms of equity. So I'm not getting any equity. On a, on a rental, which that's where I'm really like, wow, I need to be owning. And I'm like, even if the market did, uh, even if, it, if the bubble did pop, like how bad would the bubble pop? And would that make it worse to, to lose money on that? And I'm like, well, I'll just stay there. Worst case scenario is I just stay in my house. <laughs> or if it's really bad, I'll just rent it out because there's such a demand in housing. So, um, you know, in a worst case scenario, things could get real nasty and that would be all across the board for everybody. I mean, if it got to a point where it was a nasty, nasty thing like we saw in 2007, 2008, what did the government do? They stepped in and they helped out. All right. So I see people tuning in from Bullhead City, Dallas, Texas, Southern California. Um, Scott Glick says, Jeff, what areas are you considering? Uh, considering around Arizona or in Phoenix? So the areas that I'm looking at around Phoenix is to be closer to my family, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best places that I would live. I still think Gilbert is a really cool place to live. Uh, that That's like, Gilbert Chandler is pretty nice. I also like Ahwatukee, but because my family's in North Phoenix, um, I'm looking at Happy Valley, and now everyone's gonna try and move over there because they're gonna be like, oh, Happy Valley, Phoenix, Arizona, what's over there? Um, but I'm also in, I'm, I'm currently in a Desert Ridge area. The thing with Desert Ridge is it's really expensive out here and then it's like basically North Scottsdale. But I mean, if I could live anywhere, I would go with DC Ranch. I would go with DC Ranch up in Scottsdale, but it's a little bit more expensive out there. So now you guys know, go to move to DC Ranch, but it's expensive. So, you know, I don't know what your guys' uh, budget is. Anyway, so I was trying to apply for a loan uh, with the loan officer. I'm still looking for the perfect loan officer, but... Um, I do have some, but it, it's not always the loan officer. Sometimes it's the programs they offer. He said I needed to make like $93,000 this year in order to qualify for a $450,000 or a $400,000 loan. And I was looking at homes in the area for four hundred dollars to 500000 and I'm like, oh man, I need to make $93,000? Whoa. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, man, inflation must have really hit. And anyway, so that, that's, that's, that's no story there. Um, AJ says, yeah, DC Ranch is legit. But I just showed you guys at the beginning of this video, like I was showing you that um, Rio Verde, I'll do it again. I'll, I'll play this in the background. But this is Rio Verde right here. You know, um, this area is behind, this is the McDowell Mountains right here. This area you're looking at, that's Tom's Thumb. That's McDowell Mountains. But Rio Verde right on the, uh, it's just north of the reservation. This area is beautiful. I mean, it's better than, it, it's more beautiful than Fountain Hills, I'll say that. Uh, although Fountain Hills has a nice view of Red Mountain, but there's the Verde River. Okay, like I said earlier, there's Weaver's Needle. Okay, so I would say um, Rio Verde. I, I could show you guys some drone footage from uh, uh, um, New River, Cave Creek, those areas. Uh, but even Gold Canyon's beautiful. Gold Canyon out in East Phoenix. But if you want big city, I mean, I'm showing you areas where it's rural in Phoenix Metro. Like some people, they don't like uh, rural. They want big city activity. So if you're looking for big city vibes, you go to downtown Scottsdale, Tempe, you go to downtown Phoenix. All right, I see some more people doing a location check. Shout out to everybody who's doing a location check and crushing up the lights. So we got Michelle's daughter saying, Gilbert. Uh, AJ says, Cave Creek is amazing. I hope it stays small. Yeah, they, they're doing everything they can to make sure Cave Creek stays small. <laughs> I'm talking about the government. Um, Scott Glick says, Happy Valley is nice, man, especially by Norterra. Yeah, but it's rural. If you guys are looking to be like close to, you know, Home Depot and all that, you got to drive quite a ways down the I-17 to get there. But um, anyway, we'll, we'll, we got into all that. So that's, that's Rio Verde right there. That's an area where you can buy property. Uh, you know, it's going to be a pretty penny. It's a beautiful area, but it's definitely up and coming. It's on the backside of the McDowell Mountains. Uh, and I used to go out there. It's, it used to be called Dynamite. I don't even know if they call it Dynamite anymore. But let's talk about some other incentives or reasons to actually buy a home. Uh, in, right now, instead of renting, as someone who's renting myself, like I said, throwing money away. Basically, no, the money's not going towards any equity. Uh housing prices just keep going up and up. So it's like the more I wait for the market to pop, it still doesn't pop. It's like, whoa. Um, interest rates. 
still low interest rates and they're about to go up. So I kind of have this sense of urgency lock in a low interest rate before it goes up, which could also be the catalyst that pops the bubble, right? So we'll see about all that. Uh, having stable housing, you know, not having to worry about like the, the, ten, the, the leasing agency coming up to me saying, hey, we need to raise your rent. You know, so after my six month lease or 12 month lease is up, they come to me and they say, yeah, but rent's gone up another $200. I've heard this time and again where people's rent just keeps going up, up, up. Jacob coming in from Bullhead City. Uh, I have family who lives in Gold Canyon. It's 20 minutes from pretty much everything. Yeah, Gold Canyon. I'll show you guys on a map real quick, Gold Canyon. So... This is Apache Junction. Here's Gold Canyon. It's beautiful out there. My gosh, this is a beautiful area. I, I would say you don't want to be west. It's not so beautiful west of US 60, but east of US 60 towards the superstitions, it's beautiful. I was actually going around Google Maps here the other day because people keep talking about the Apache Trail, which is uh, this Highway 88 here. I don't even know if the little orange guy goes there. Oh, it does. Wow, okay, so you can actually go on Google Maps onto the Apache Trail. This this is actually a really popular road. I, we have a video on this channel uh, dedicated to the Apache Trail, but you can't go all the way to um, Roosevelt Lake like you used to be able to. It actually stops about right here, uh, somewhere around this area, Tortilla Trailhead. You can go past uh, Tortilla Flats. Let's see if I can find that video so you guys can see it. Uh, tortilla flat and off-road to canyon lake this video right here if you go to the home page that one is actually the the uh, apache trail but the reason that people like the apache trail is because it basically runs right alongside the salt river the salt river is a mighty mighty river people don't realize but the salt river is where we get most of our water from it's it's like right it's not too far behind the colorado river so the salt river is a beast of a river it's just been tamed by four reservoirs the apache lake reservoir canyon lake saguaro lake and roosevelt lake but if you go up here they have salt river canyon i mean it's just like it's like grand canyon 2.0 out there the salt river is so um i was out out here actually checking around in this this wilderness trying to see what's out here because you know i you could walk out there but or you could just you know <laughs> look on google maps and see where you want to walk but this whole area was really interesting to me um as i was looking around the tonto national forest it's basically no man's land it's totally an uninhabited and i was even looking out here like what if i took the apache trail and went off on one of these jeep trails uh into the superstition mountains cool stuff man it's cool exploring but it's kind of it's kind of hard to get out there you really need a uh you really need a um jeep Someone said, sorry, speech to text is all over the place. Oh, Ray's trying to say something about um, using his voice to text on his phone. He's trying to just voice it in there. He said, I live in Gold Canyon. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, definitely one of the other people that live in the neighborhood, mostly old people. Yeah, I mean, Gold Canyon's a place where uh, there's gonna be old people out here. It's an older community. Who typically lives in rural areas? Older people. Nothing wrong with older people, actually. As I get older, I'm going to be an older person. I'm getting older now. I'm almost 40, right? So it's like, when I say that, please don't think I'm speaking down to old people because everyone gets old someday. Uh, anyway, um, how is housing availability in Arizona? It's scarce. It just keeps getting more and more scarce. Uh, I was looking at an uh, infograph the other day from my brother, and he was surprised because the, things were supposed to be slowing down in Phoenix and they went up last in, in November because they, they pulled the data for November. I don't know if the data is out for December yet, but I was like, wow, the market just keeps on going up. And I was talking to a guy at the car wash yesterday. I went to Jackson's car wash and he was like, yeah, it's an irrational market. It's, it, you, you, it's really hard to forecast an irrational market. And like we said in the last video, you know, the, the market can remain ir more irrational longer than you can remain solvent <laughs> so just keep in mind the market is irrational housing is scarce that's why i was like man with the scarce housing you know it's better to own right now but obviously everyone's just kind of waiting on the sidelines for this bubble pop of the economy where it's going to pop and we were just like is it ever going to happen what do you guys think of this uh sweatshirt that we had made so i've been making some more clothing it's not quite ready to go yet i still have to keep 
you know, trying it out, Washington, washing it, wearing it. But this is like the Arizona flag. Some people said they wanted the Arizona flag on there. We still have the bird. Um, we're going with some other logos. I've got probably 120 different items of clothing in my garage right now in bags and sitting in storage containers, just kind of in, in, in storage right now waiting to go live. But, you know, it'll be interesting to see what people gravitate towards. That's why uh, even here on Living in Arizona, right here on the community tab, I said, what do you guys like? You know, I show this. I'm like, is this the stuff you guys want to wear? Here's the reason why I make this stuff. Because it's like people want to wear what they want to wear, but they're like, ah, oh, they can't find exactly what they want to wear. But if people tell me what it is they like to wear, I can try and get that and make these products. But I need you guys to go on here onto the community tab. I had 20 people comment. That's actually a lot of comments for a picture of me just kind of like flexing in front of a mirror. Most people they saw it was probably like, why is this dude posting a selfie? No, it's because I'm showing you the hat and the, and, the, and the sweater, seeing if you guys actually want more of this inventory. That's what I'm getting at. But um, here, right here, I showed Scott sales booming. Should we make a video showing the growth? So I was also asking people if they want me to get out there, do virtual tours of these areas. This area right here is just north of, uh, well, I would say it's just north of Kierlin by the Scottsdale Quarter. They've got two mega sized uh apartment condo complexes and they've got them popping up right here in the background you can see so they've got all these they're just buildings high rises because they have so much demand for housing out here it's ridiculous but um i also said what virtual tours so 108 people commented there that was probably i've noticed that you guys definitely prefer nature over the big cities okay i've got two super chats i've got to respond to what do you think about harmony one solid project and lots of potential in my opinion uh cryptocurrency Actually, I do have a cryptocurrency channel. For those of you who are trying to get into cryptocurrency, it's down right now. So if you're trying to get in, it's better to buy the dip than buy at all-time highs. I never really talked about Harmony One, but I do have crypto training videos right here. If you guys are trying to learn about cryptocurrency, I've got a whole list right here. A whole list. You guys could go through this. How to get started in cryptocurrency, best wallet, best exchanges, investing do's and don'ts. Uh, you know, obviously I can't talk about all that on an Arizona channel because people don't really care about that necessarily. Some of you do, but if you do, come over to Blockchain Bulls. That's the channel. Make sure you spell the bulls with a Z. I had to do that because someone had Blockchain Bulls with the S. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, but I've, I've actually been making some more videos over there. So if you want to talk crypto, that's the place to do it. Not here on the Arizona channel, although I meant, I'll say a little bit about it. Um... And I do see someone else left a super chat. Someone said, moving to Glendale in April. Got any tips from me? Uh, moving to Glendale. Um, let's see here. Glendale. Uh, I would say move closer to the Arizona Cardinals Stadium. This area right here. Uh, thanks to the 49 people who hit the likes. It's Friday night. What time's the best time for me to go live? You guys prefer weekends? Do you prefer evenings? Do you prefer mornings? It seems like the the around about 5 p.m. on a Sunday night is when I get the most viewers. Uh, I figured Friday night at seven o'clock is when I get the most viewers because obviously if I'm trying to get the most viewers, that means that I'm doing it because that's when most people are trying to tune in. <laughs> that's when people are like kind of, well, what's going on out there? But anyway, I would move closer to State Farm Stadium uh, if you could, not necessarily around that area. That's not a very good area, Westgate, but I would say probably uh, this area. Uh, I would even call it surprise, but uh, this is a nice area on West Phoenix. Uh, like I was saying, my brother, who's a real estate agent, I put the link to the top there and in the description to, to talk to him, to reach out to him. He actually recommended Goodyear and Buckeye as a decent area for growth with reasonable pricing, good pricing and a nice area. Actually, just to tell you how nice of an area it is out here on the in Buckeye, they have Verado here, but they have a Four Seasons. If you guys know about Four Seasons Resorts, they don't build Four Seasons Resorts in ugly places. They build it in nice places. So check out the Four Seasons at Verado. It's actually, um, I, I went there, it was done. I don't know why it's, I don't know if the hotel's done. They have Vix, the bar. So this area right here is basically the Four Seasons. When I went there, it looked like the golf course was at least work, uh, up and running. So Verado's a nice place to go, and it's not too expensive out on the west side. Uh, but that, that would be close to 
um, the Cardinals Stadium. As you guys know, the Cardinals are playing the Seahawks. Some would call them the Chicken Hawks. I call them the Chicken Hawks. I have no respect for Seattle Seahawks because they're in our conference, and I'm an Arizona Cardinals fan, so I'm not going to bow down to the Seahawks ever. And if I was to say there was one rival, well, I would say we have three real rivals in the, for the Cardinals. You know, we're going to the playoffs, but we're playing the Chicken Hawks, Seahawks. Sorry. We're playing the Seahawks. Uh, this Sunday at home, and yeah, I would say our rivals are the Niners, the Seahawks, or the Rams. And I don't know which one I dislike more. The only other team that's outside of the division, outside of our division, that that I think we have a pretty big rivalry with is Green Bay. And I wouldn't be surprised if we meet Green Bay in the playoffs at some point. Um, Let's see here. So Scott Glick says they are days away from opening Bell Park Legacy Park in Mesa Queen Creek on Ellsworth, largest sports complex west of the Mississippi, concert venues, sports and entertainment Buy a home near there. Yes, that's a good idea. So that's obviously not Glendale because he said he's moving to the west side. But my my favorite area, I think I think this whole area from Chandler, Gilbert, even in the Queen Creek, Queen Creek 20 years from now is going to be a really nice place to be if the market, if, 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 if we keep growing, the growth keeps happening in the Queen Creek. Because what happened last time in Queen Creek, Santan Valley, when the market popped, everyone was like, oh, I got to get out of Santan Valley and, um, and Queen Creek because it's so far away from my job. Well, I don't think it's the no, no two circumstances are the same, right? But the area that he's talking about is next to the area of Phoenix Gateway, Mesa Gateway Airport, which is cool because this is Phoenix area's number two airport next to Sky Harbor. So Sky Harbor is right now the main hub. You go into Terminal 4 any given day or Terminal 3, in, in particular, where Amer- wherever American Airlines is. You go in that terminal where American Airlines is, It is too, if you have claustrophobia, good luck. You're not going to do it. You can't do it. It's too crowded. Even, even during the uh, situation we've had going on in the world today, that terminal is just too congested. And... You know, you would think that there's going to be like an overflow terminal or they need an overflow airport for people on the east side. And that's what Phoenix Mesa Gateway is. And they're building a new terminal. I think it's right here on this side. And they're going to have right now. They don't have any major carriers. They only have Allegiant and like some other small carrier that goes to Calgary and like Idaho Falls, Idaho and stuff like that. But if you guys are out on that side, there's going to be some nice growth taking place with Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport, and I like it because if you live on the east side in Queen Creek or in this whole area that's growing, Mesa even, like he's saying, uh, you're so far away from Phoenix Sky Harbor, it's ridiculous. you got to get on the 60 or the 202. I would, I would just take the 60 all the way in. It takes forever. But the area he's talking about where there's real big growth, if I had a little, if I could draw a line right here, it's basically 202 in the 24. This whole area is known as East Mark. That's where the big housing community is. And it's powerful, man. This area is like known as the Tech Corridor. The plans they have for this area are massive, man. So uh, just basically the area that he's talking about, anywhere within a 10 mile circumference of Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport is going to be like the new epicenter for the east side of the valley in 20 years. But I mean, if you want to get into an area that's going to be growing, that's it. So uh, Daniel Wilson, do you have an opinion on Mayor Arizona? Does it have a good outdoor beauty? Wow, Mayor. I haven't been to Mayor in a long time. Isn't that on the way to uh, Prescott? Let me see, Mayor. Man, I Mayor is such a small town. Um, yeah, it is on the way to Prescott. Okay, I, I know about Mayor. It's yeah, it's nice. It's nice, nice outdoor beauty. They have a rock mine, a rock quarry. My dad's big into stones. He likes uh, like all the local stones, amethyst, jasper, uh, you know, tourmaline. Some of these turquoise. They don't have any turquoise there. I think they have travertine though. But he, he when we went up there with my dad here recently, he had to stop at one of the rock quarries and just take a look. I think it was by Mayor. Uh, was it Mayor or was it? Let me see, rock, rock quarry. Oh man. Anyway, most of you probably don't give a care about rocks, but he yeah, they have granite pit up here. But he stops at these granite pit or these uh, rock quarries all the time. I think it was like right here. What is that? With the rock yard? That's got to be it. But it doesn't have a name on here. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just an obsession that I have. That oh, Stone Stone World Stone World Rock Quarry Two right here. 
Stone World Rock Quarry One. Yeah, see, so that's out in Mayer. <laughs> that's all. That's all I really know about Mayer. But I mean, if you drive out over here, it's just a small town along the Highway 69. I, would I live there? Yeah, if I if I had a, an acre or two up on the hill overlooking, I think it's a nice area. It's, it gets a little chilly in the winter time. I'll say that. Uh, I'll say that. Um, what is it like for renters? It's not a good time to be a renter right now. I'm telling you, like renting is not any better than owning. It's like if I had a choice right now, I would rather own even in, a, in an inflated market because renting, they're just taking the money. They're, they're gouging. They're price gouging. Really, they're overcharging. So, uh, so I think living in Phoenix right now is more expensive than living in Maui right now. I think you could find cheaper accommodation in Maui than you could in Phoenix right now. That's the truth. <laughs> well, that's that's my opinion. I mean, we're just barely cheaper than San Diego right now. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, someone said, our park in Mesa keeps raising the rent every year and does very little. Now the CEO is demanding a cut of bingo if he decides to allow it. Our park, the park plays bingo? Okay. I didn't know that. Or maybe I misread it. Do you think rate hikes could crash the stock market? Oh, wow. That's a great, that's a great uh, question. I mean, that's... That's taking a soft subject in Arizona and everybody's going to be like, well, can you keep talking about Arizona instead of rate hikes and economics? Well, it all kind of plays hand in hand, but uh, I don't know. What, what, do I, what do I know? I mean, it, we're in an irrational market. I mean, everything that you would think should crash the market, uh, pandemic, all this different stuff, none of it crashed the market. So uh, rate hikes, I would, I would assume it would slow things down a little bit. I would assume it would slow things down. And it's kind of like... Um, it's kind of like when you're going 100 miles an hour and then you need to come to a red light, you know, and you could do it one of two ways. You either come to a sudden stop and then squeal your tires into the middle of the center of the intersection and basically get into a collision, or you kind of go 100 and then you slowly press the brakes and then you come to a complete stop very gently. That's kind of what they're trying to do is like subtly slow down the market. So it's kind of like stagnation may be uh, more realistic than... Uh, a bubble, a bubble pop. If they if they can control it, it's like a controlled burn. You know what a controlled burn is? They do those out here in Arizona. Um, the dude, dumb, uh, he has a funny name, Dumb Money Media. I'll say I'll say I'll say the name, but I just don't want to call you Dumb Money Media. Uh, but I, I get it. Anyway, he he gave me another super chat for five bucks. He said, "Thanks, man. I'm moving out there to use my VA benefits and work on my channel. FT maybe money, ha ha." Um, uh, dumb money media is funny because like a play on words sometimes gets a lot more subscribers on YouTube. Um, if you like silver gold meme videos, give me a look. So if you guys like silver gold meme videos, take a look at dumb money media. But who knows? Maybe you just go take a look. See, say, hey, what does this guy got going on over there? <laughs> it's like we just did a collab on, on Super Chat. What is Cochise County like and Douglas in particular? What about those vintage commercial buildings there for any great deals? Wow, I like these super chats. This is why I like super chats. Number one, people pay me money to do it. He just guy just gave me 10 bucks. Thanks, John Diddler. Thanks uh, to the money media guy. And But when people pay money to ask a question, it stands out on the chat. But also when they're spending money, they're asking good questions that lead to good conversations. So let's take a look at Douglas and Cochise County. That's in Southern Arizona, right? Uh, some, I, I mean, there's so many towns. Yeah, I know where Douglas is. It's right across the border from Agua Prieta. You'll notice that always the Mexico side of where a border town is always has a bigger area. Look at Mexicali, look at uh, Rio, Colorado, uh, that, that town just south of Yuma. They're always bigger than, or even Tijuana. Like Tijuana is probably bigger than San Diego. I don't know about that actually. San Diego might be bigger, but Tijuana keeps growing, Mexicali. Uh, anyway, this area right here in the border complex, in the border, they call it a borderplex. Is that what they're calling it here? No. But the borderplex area, I actually haven't been down across this border in a while, if ever. The only border crossings I've ever done in New Mexico in a car are through Nogales uh, and Lukeville down into Snowda to Rocky Point. Uh, I've done a couple in California, but I don't ever remember doing this one in Douglas. The area, I know the area very good because it's close to uh, Bisbee. So you can see here's Bisbee. This mountain range is beautiful. It's high elevation and it's nice. 
Uh, Douglas is good. What's the reason you're moving to Douglas, by the way? Are you going to work for the Border Patrol? But this whole mountain right here uh, is is a really nice mountain range. I, it's the um, they've got they, they used to mine a lot of copper and stuff out of there. Thanks to the 78 people who crushed up the likes. Like I was saying, is this a good time for me to go to live? Do you guys like Friday Night Lives, or what? I mean, I'm, there's nothing else really better to do during a during the situation right now in the world on a Friday night. Well, there is like travel, which I usually do. By the way. You guys could check out uh, Island Hopper. I did a video today of when I was in uh, Sawana Island in Dominican Republic. This is a beautiful island. This is one of the most beautiful islands I've ever been to. It's in Dominican Republic. Uh, but come over to Island Hopper TV. I'll put a link right here to the video for those of you who want to watch it. Um, there's also a link in the description to the channel. But Isla Sawana, one of the most beautiful islands I've ever been to. Let me just see if I can get... Look at that. That's how the water is. It's like a pool out there. They, they just everyone's in waist high water there's starfish in the water don't touch the starfish but i say that because that's something i would rather be doing right now uh, but the situation going on in the world today i can't do that so um but anyway back to the question about douglas that's basically all i could tell you about that i don't have too much reason to go out to this area but they do have douglas bisbee international airport <laughs> okay it's right next to the department of corrections Let's see, did someone else, if, I thought I saw someone else said, uh, do a super chat. Global Auto Depot just said $5. Okay, so back to the regular chats. I remember my parents rent $600 for a two bedroom apartment in 2000. Yeah, man, we were just doing the inflation calculator. In 2000, a dollar back then is worth the same as a dollar 61. Let's just take a look at 1990. 213. In 30 years, in 30 years, a dollar has uh, more than doubled in value or in depreciation. That's what it is, depreciated. Does that make sense to you guys? Do you guys understand? So $1 in 1990 is equivalent to what $2.13 is now. So if you were to type in, let's just say $1,000. So what's $1,000 worth in, in uh, 2021? $2,126. Does that make sense how we're calculating that? Because it can be kind of confusing at first for some people because... It's a new concept, but this is the idea. Inflation calculator, it's crazy out there. It is crazy out there. What's better for home buyers, low rates or low home prices? Great question, great question. In a sustainable market, assuming there's not like any knee-jerk reactions in the market where the market just pulls its value, just loses value to end over end, and it holds its value, yeah, I would say low, uh, I would say it's better to have low interest rates. Yeah, I would say that. Um, but if, if if in the event there was a uh, uh, economic depression or uh, economics, something bad happened to the economy, and your home price that you bought for five hundred thousand goes down to four hundred thousand, you just lost a hundred thousand dollars in equity, and then you got to wait for that to recover. People are always speculating. It's like you never know who to trust, who to believe. I mean, do you trust Jeff's guidance? No, because I'm not an expert. I don't have insider information. All I can do is forecast based on reasonable expectations, right? I mean, that's all you can really do. It's not like I'm an expert on the subject of economy. And I don't think anyone is except for the people who are actually manipulating the market. You know, like because, you know, some people think, oh, there's no one out there possibly manipulating the market. No, bankers would never do such a thing. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, M. Bush says, what if you're a cash buyer? If you're a cash buyer, I mean, that's the same thing. I mean, if the economy collapses and the housing prices go down, you know, it's going to hit It's going to hit everyone. Renter, um, everybody, right? But at least if you're a cash buyer, the worst, you can, the worst case scenario, I guess, is you live in the house. The second worst scenario is if you don't want to live there and there's a demand for a rent, then you just rent it out <laughs> and you get money coming back in. So it's like you paid 500,000, you charge 200 or 1,500 or $2,000 in a down market per month. That's $2,000 just coming back to you, just coming back to you and you still own the house. So that's the benefit that homeowners have is they can always uh, rent it out. Now, what if there's like, everyone says, there's a water shortage in Phoenix. Phoenix is too hot. No one wants to live in Phoenix. By the way, this has never happened. We've, we've never really had an exodus on that level, but it could happen. We kind of had one in 2007, 2008. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people moving to Phoenix right now, and I don't know how many of them are going to be like uh, returning home, right? Because some people that come to Phoenix, there might be like, 
Yeah, I tried Phoenix. I didn't really like it. It was too hot. I didn't really like the, the environment. I thought it was too spread out. And then they returned back to where they moved from. Like, what percentage of people who are moving here are going to do that? You know, but we've had nothing but growth in Phoenix for the last, like, forever. And we've been the fastest growing city forever. Or one of the, like, not forever. Maricopa County is still the fastest growing county. Even though our population keeps going up, percentage-wise, it's one of the fastest growing also. But in terms of overall numbers, we have the most people moving here in terms of raw numbers. But if you look at percentage, I think some places in Idaho or even Texas had higher percentage of inbound movers, right? Um, Andrew Kano just wants to put it out there, FJB. Uh, I think I know what that means. Uh, Fritz Snyder says, Arizona is no longer the place to get cheap homes. Yeah, I mean, where is though? Like, I know where it is. I was talking to a man who uh, whose only, collect, only source of income is retirement, uh, social security. And he had to leave Phoenix and now he lives in a little small town out here in Kansas. Uh, uh, it's some weird small town. Uh, what's the name of it? Um, guys, no, no politics, please. Um, I, I know people have an opinion. We have to remain agnostic here. Um, so please don't say things like that. <laughs> um, Christian says, I have just over an acre in Tumakari, Carmen, right behind the mission, going to build a small winter home there what are your thoughts on the area um to mockery uh, dude i love to mockery i love the whole area rio rico two back this whole area right here this is a great area did you you said i have just over an acre i would trade you in an instant i love this area uh what are your thoughts on that area yeah <laughs> i love this area i mean right over here you got mount rights you got madera canyon just a beautiful area. There was actually a crazy story about the Ruby Massacre, uh, Ruby Ghost Town. If you guys want a ghost town that's not part of, you know, contemporary, like everyone knows about it. You know, you got Jerome, which is no longer a ghost town. This is a legit ghost town. Ruby is a ghost town. By the way, I've said this before, but if you don't know what a ghost town is, I'll tell you right now. A ghost town is where it had a big population of, say, a thousand or ten thousand people that live there. And they were typically miners or they were there for some boom, boom town reason. And then the mining economy dried up and everybody left, you know, because that, that's what happens with boom towns that sometimes they slow down. So people move there and then they leave. And the only thing left is the ghost of the past. That's why they call it a ghost town. OK, so now you guys know why they call it a ghost town anyway. People, people might know that they might not know that now you guys know. Um, Ruby is a legit ghost town. Tombstone is no longer a ghost town because people live there. Jerome, not a ghost town. People live there. People go there to visit the ghost town. Ruby is a legit ghost town. No one goes there. But there was a massacre here. And it's not a funny massacre. It is actually a very sad massacre. But uh, you guys can look it up if you guys want. Or we can go down there and talk about it. Uh, anyway, Andrew says bubble trouble. Rob Tor says Madeira Canyon is great. I assume he's talking about Madeira. Tombstone Brewing is big for the town. Yeah, Tombstone, I mean, it has the name. They made a movie about the place. Another area that's cool is Sycamore Canyon. Sy Sycamore Canyon. Is this the Sycamore? I've heard of Sycamore Canyon. I thought there's a Sycamore Canyon up in um, Flagstaff, too, ain't there? Look at the only car on the road is a, a uh, forest service car. Yeah. There's Ruby Road, but that's down there uh, on the Mexico border. I could have sworn there's a Sycamore Canyon. Sycamore Creek, yeah, Sycamore Creek. That's up there in... Uh, what? Man, I don't know. Uh, so many different places. There's so many different names. You know, when you're taking a big state like Arizona, you try to remember everything. I mean... I'm like a memory. I'm like a library in here, but I can't remember everything. But Sycamore, if that's a Sycamore Canyon, that's actually a nice. Uh, and I'm not confusing with Oak Creek Canyon either. But let's see here. There's Walnut Canyon. That's the one. I know that one. Walnut Canyon is where they have the uh, Native American uh, ruins or like the cliff dwellings. And if you go in here, let's see Walnut Canyon. Let's see if I can get some pictures. See, they have these 
cliff dwellings. And you can hike in there. That's near Flagstaff. For those of you who are looking for an outdoor activity for spring, probably, or even the summer, uh, you can go here. They have these in, in Walnut Creek. I, I should probably go there and make a video. Walnut Canyon. That's out there by uh, Flagstaff, by the way. George says, sorry, I'm late. Homes are going down. No, we're, we're, unfortunately, uh, the, the, the analysts or the experts are analyzing or expecting the housing market to continue going up another uh, 20, 18 to 20% over the next year or two. Wow, that, that'd be ridiculous if they went up another 18 to 20%. This is hearsay. I'm not saying that I saw this, but some of you guys can confirm or deny this. Um, what are my thoughts on Cottonwood? Cottonwood's a great area. The only reason I wouldn't personally wouldn't want to live in a place like Cottonwood or Tubac or some of these other places is because they don't have a big airport. If they had an airport where I could, because I, I, I work and travel, right? Like those of you who follow Island Hopper TV know I like to travel, so I got to have an airport to land in. And I don't want to land in, uh, you know, Phoenix and then drive all the way to Cottonwood. I guess I could. But I usually get picked up by an Uber or a taxi. That would be a pretty expensive taxi, right? But if like Cottonwood or Prescott, just if Prescott were to build up their airport, and they say they did. Now, this is not popular with locals at all, but they're going to need a big airport in north central Arizona. North central Arizona needs one, whether they build it in Cottonwood or they build it in Prescott. Prescott seems like the most likely location, although the most central location, hands down, would be in Cottonwood. But if they built an airport in Cottonwood, that place just takes off instantly. And I think the reason they don't build a airport in Cottonwood or Prescott that brings in people is because they know that if they built an airport, it takes off. It, it booms. Uh, but sometimes the growth happens anyway, and then they have no choice but to build an airport. But Cottonwood right here, I mean, look, you could build a beautiful little airport right here on that flat land right there on 89A. Let's see. Oh, they, Google hasn't even gone over there yet. Wow, what's going on with that? Has Google not gone on? Yeah, they did. All right, so let's see. This is where I would build the airport if that's as flat as it looks. Yeah, that's flat. That's airport right there. They could build it right there. And the reason that's a perfect location for it, just based on just shooting from the hip here, either side right here. Okay, it's like the, you could call it the Tri-City area. You could call it like, yeah, the Tri-City area. So you have uh, Sedona here, Cottonwood here, and Prescott. So it's not close enough to Prescott, though, because you have to go through 89A, and that's a windy road. Although it's a beautiful drive, it is windy. Uh, yeah, Prescott might need its own airport, and then Cottonwood probably needs one for the Sedona area. Although you don't want this area to grow because it's just, it's not a good place. It's with big commercial buildings all around Prescott, not good or uh, around Sedona not good because it takes away from the, the the reason people want to live there the natural beauty thanks to the 114 people who crushed up the likes hit that like to 230 if we can and then I see some more people asking Susan says wow flat thanks yeah um, yeah I mean it is flat you need a you need a flat area to build an airport <laughs> um, unless you want to build one of those crazy airports where like they, they build the runway and right after the runway it just flies off the cliff you know they, i've seen the airports like that in the himalayas <laughs> i'm like whoa man could you imagine landing or having to fly into there so the the larger flat area the better for airports but that that would be a good area to build an airport or they just build it in prescott and call it a day it's probably the best place to build it is prescott they're they're adding on to this airport here in prescott it's Pre prescott regional <laughs> The, the only flight that comes in there is United. They have a United. You can fly United into Prescott, which could work, actually. I don't know. I don't know. Um, more filling says, it's, it's why I love my little cabin in Heber. I doubt it's getting an airport soon. No, Heber is not going to get an airport anytime soon, I don't think. There's no re Heber is not, and if you want real rural living, Heber Overguard is the place for you. It's a great place to be, but you better love to get frozen snow. You got to love the snow. Uh, it's, it's Arizona, so if you love the Arizona taxation or something like that, but if you love snow, Heber is not for you. Um, 
it's just on the back side of uh, the what is it? The Mogollon Rim. Here's the Mogollon Rim. Like I was looking on the map, I just go out in here. I'm like, where should I go? Where should I go? I'm like, Chevalon Canyon Lake Campground. All right, this is totally. You could hear the eagles. You can hear the eagles out here. Okay, like you know that noise, whatever the the noise is. I mean, I've been out here on these lakes in the, on the Mogollon Rim, and you can hear the eagles. You can hear like the birds. You can hear like the coyotes, uh, the elk, the elk. There's a lot of elk up there. Scott says George live in Queen Creek and drove drive to downtown Phoenix takes 45 minutes at that an hour. Oh yeah, that's not even including if there's traffic, and you know these freeways are not uh, exempt from traffic or traffic jams. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, why don't you buy some land and build exactly like you want? Okay, yes, I've thought about that. And uh, again, the issue is the airport situation. So I'm kind of like, where would I do that? Now, if that wasn't an issue, where would I pick? I'll tell you the places I would pick. Uh, and people on this channel, if they're up there, they're going to be like, dang it, why did he blow us up? I would go Strawberry Pine. This is a good area to live, okay? It's right at the foot of the... Uh, of the Mogollon Rim. So it's not quite as cold as it gets up on the Mogollon Rim, but strawberry pine area, real nice. Um, another area that I would like to live if I could, I really like a uh, village of Oak Creek, but the crowd out there is not necessarily my vibe because I'm not quite a hippie and I'm not quite into art. And I don't know if I would fit into that, 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 that kind of, uh, I don't know if those are my people. I'm not saying they're not my people. I'm just saying, I don't know if that's exactly like my fit. Uh, you know, but Sedona is a real nice area. It's just expensive and, and it's real arts town. I, I like art, but I'm not like obsessed with art. And I think people in Sedona, Oak Creek are obsessed with art or they're like retired. Uh, would I buy in the Cottonwood area? Honestly, no. I would probably go more for like Cornville. Like I would, I would like to be on this Oak Creek River. If I could have a piece of property on the Oak Creek River, I'd take that over the Verde uh, property. And then um, I would say there's some areas around Prescott that are pretty nice. Like if you go out here on Iron Springs Road, uh, that's a nice little area up here, Iron Springs Road. And then if you wanted to get more embedded in the forest, you could go to uh, places like where Lynx Lake is. Um, where else? Groom Creek. Groom Creek's popular for a cabin. That's People build cabins out in Groom Creek. And then in the summertime, they go and kind of live up there for a couple weeks at a time. And, and, and in the winter, like during Christmas, they'll go up there during Christmas when it snows and go have a winter Christmas. So it's like a second home in this area over here, but Prescott's more of like a primary home. What's going on, Lulia? Um, David Toe says, hey, Jeff, relocating to the Phoenix Valley once I find employment out there, what is considered a good hourly rate where you are? I live in New York. Great question. I have that information actually. Uh, so this was, this was the cost of living calculator on bestplaces.net. Um, you could see uh, Arizona, how Arizona ranks compared to the rest of the United States. For studio apartment, Arizona is 906. Rest of the U.S. is 949. Uh, I guess th this is this is for rent, okay? But I don't think these numbers are correct anymore. Um, but one of the things that they did do on this website right here, apartmentlist.com, they they were able to calculate the average uh, Arizona, you know, needed income forty nine hundred dollars, almost five thousand dollars a month is basically the livable wage. So they use the living wage calculator and you could see this is what it said. One adult with one child needs to be making around about $30 an hour. If you have no kids, the livable wage is 1541. Poverty wage is 613. Uh, and then if, so if you're not making any more, I don't know anyone who's getting paid less than 613, right? For, for that, but minimum wage, $12. Okay. Um, and then you have three children. Uh, you need to be making about $46 an hour, two adults working each. If, if you have two adults working between the two of you, you need to be making around about, uh, a one working 29, same thing, 
So adding in, in, you know, it's expensive out here actually. Uh, two adults, both working, sixteen dollars each. So there you go. Jeremy says, "Hey man, I like your channel. I'm an Army veteran thinking about relocating from North Dakota. What's a good suburb of Phoenix that you would recommend?" Uh, what's a good suburb of Phoenix that I recommend? Yeah, so we were talking about this kind of earlier. Um, Prescott's definitely not a suburb, but the areas that are suburbs that that are within the Phoenix metro area, Chandler, Gilbert, Peoria, uh, Goodyear, Mesa, you could probably add that to the list. And then uh, North Phoenix, I consider North Phoenix a suburb, even though it's part of Phoenix. <laughs> But the, the that area that I would I would call in to call out and shout out would be like from Desert Ridge Mayo Clinic. This area is where the Mayo Clinic is, right? So I live right over by the Mayo Clinic. Actually, this is the area that I kind of live in. Um, the Mayo Clinic is building a whole new tower. They're building a whole new clinic that's bigger than even what the, they had before. I think this one's getting ready to be the one of the biggest clinics in the in the United States. The Mayo Clinic here in Phoenix. It's crazy how big they're getting. But this area is Desert Ridge, so North Phoenix, all the way over here to like Norterra, yeah. This area right here is nice. Uh, if you wanted a nice out of the town suburb, Anthem. And then there's like New River, which is where you get property. This is Anthem up here. You can see how far up it is. Those locals are out south. Northeast Phoenix is great, yeah. George Krug, yeah, in the Bay Area sucks. I think I could buy and transfer would be worth it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the Bay Area is expensive, but it's big change in lifestyle for sure. Um, Adam's Garage, how to and more. Why doesn't Sierra Vista get much press? Nice area. So Sierra Vista, it does get press. It's just, but yeah, that's a good question. Why doesn't it? I mean, it's in a, it's, it's definitely the big city near Tombstone and Bisbee. Uh, it's actually really nice. I mean, Sierra Vista is a nice area. It's near Fort Huachuca, which is an army base. So is, unless they close down the army base, I would imagine the economy is always going to be there. Uh, and I don't think they're going to close down Fort Huachuca for any reason. But this this Miller Peak, this whole uh, Ramsey Canyon, uh, Rock Springs Trail, beautiful area. This is actually Southern Arizona wine country. And then they have Parker Canyon lake on the other side so they have a few lakes out here and i re i like southern arizona southern arizona is the most underrated place in all of arizona in my opinion you know because people know about prescott they know about um they know about uh you know sedona cottonwood but they don't really know about what's down in southern arizona and like he said sierra vista someone said two back uh tumacacori down here this whole area real nice in this area this is southern arizona Obviously, as you go over here towards like the Buenos Aires National Wildlife Refuge towards Yuma, nothing's out there. I'm not saying that side. S Southwestern Arizona, not not amazing, but South Central Eastern Arizona, Southeastern Arizona is where it's at. That's a real nice place. This whole they have three big mountain ranges that just make it special. So I, I'm not I'm not going to downplay that at all. Maybe four. So yeah, this is a nice area out here. But yeah, Patagonia, we talked about Patagonia. It's got a great name. Um, <laughs> you know, everyone thinks Patagonia Chile, Chile. But here's Patagonia, boots on the ground right here. This is Southern Arizona. People think, oh, well, if I go further south in Arizona, it's going to get more desert. Nope. It gets more green. It's over a mile high in Patagonia. This area is beautiful. It's Southern Arizona wine country. This whole area is nice, man. They even have a lake nearby. So yeah, I would definitely put that up there. Hey, Jeff, talk a little bit about Mojave County. You never g give it any love. Oh, God, are you trying to are you trying to get me all riled up? Mojave County? Oh, man, Mojave County. <laughs> Is that a trick question? Um, let me make sure. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, it's just whole. I, nah. Uh, okay, well, okay. The, the areas in Mojave County that I like, see, the thing that I don't like about Mojave County, it's hot, man. In the summertime, 120, 130 degrees. But Lake Havasu City, great place to live eight months out of the year. 
uh, from June to September, good luck living in Lake Havasu City if you don't have any air, air conditioning in your car or in your house. Uh, Kingman, not a big fan of Kingman. Bullhead City, not a big fan. Um, and yeah, that's basically Mojave County. Uh, it's It has part of this Lake Mead area, but there's nothing there. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not too sold on Mojave County, but a lot of people who do, uh, what do they do? RVs, if they do RVs, what they, this is, this is one thing for Mojave County that I will say is a positive. Cheap, 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 very cheap, cheap land, cheap homes. And what they do is they, they get an RV, right? And so like when it's hot, they just get in the RV and they go north to Montana and Idaho and just kind of, uh, campground hop around there. So it works out for them. Uh, so buying a piece of buying a house in Kingman, your home base, and then in the summertime, just leaving Kingman, even when it's, you know, or leaving Lake Havasu city and then just going North where it's cool. That's a, that's a plan. That's a, that's a way to do that. Um, uh, it, Rob says you can't you can move to Baghdad yeah if you're into mining Baghdad go to Baghdad right here they got a big old mine this is owned by Freeport McMoran but um, that's the only people who live in Baghdad really there might be a few people who work at the convenience store or own the Copper County Bar and Grill and I'm not saying it's ugly I mean I've flown over Baghdad uh, from Las Vegas if you fly from Las Vegas down to Phoenix and you get the the window seat that looks Let's see, which one would give you the view? Uh, that's that. It just depends on the flight route the the pilot says. But if probably if you sit on the left side of the plane, you'll probably see Baghdad. I I think I saw Baghdad going out. So I saw Baghdad leaving Phoenix from the right side. Um, but yeah, you could see Baghdad from the air, and you get a really nice view of the mountains, kind of like what you get right here of the bird's eye view, and it looks nice from the sky. It's not too bad. Is no Gallus, Mexico safe across the border? I know it's cheaper to get your medication there. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I've been hearing a lot of people who do this. Like I was talking to this one person who said that they, they were down in, uh, I think they were down in San Luis, not San Luis. There was another town over here. So they went down to Yuma to go across the border to get a crown put in. They had to get a, a little bit of dental work done and they went across the border because it's cheaper and they were staying at one of like the resort hotels on the other side of the border and like I can't remember the town it started with a G it was such a small town man it was um was it San Luis no it started with a G maybe Gadsden no that's not it I would have known that but anyway they were getting their their uh medical work done down there and they were staying at a resort and I was like you know between paying from time off from work paying for the hotel every night uh, plus paying for the crown. Are you sure you're really saving money after you add in all these things? But, you know, they were doing it. And I, I, it wasn't Calexico. It wasn't Mexicali. And I'm, I, when I get my mind stuck on these things, I always want to find the answer. Maybe it was along the other side of the Colorado. Los Algondes, maybe. Maybe that was it. Lo, I think it was Los Algondes. Because that's probably why I thought the G. I think that's what it was. Small town. Uh, but you're asking about Nogales. Is it safe? The, the, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, border towns are, are always more dangerous in Mexico than anywhere else. Um, I know that when I crossed the border on Island Hopper TV to Tijuana, I did a border crossing recently. If you look at my Tijuana border crossing... So I did this video right here, walking across the border in Tijuana. I would say that I was definitely on the edge of my seat more than I wanted to be. Uh, I felt as though like right when you get across the border, there's too many people trying to sell me stuff. I didn't really like that. Uh, but this was like the border, like this guy, he was ready to get me into a, a taxi, took my luggage and everything. Here's the actual border crossing. Oh, I'm getting hit with an ad. Oh. But anyway, Nogales is probably the same kind of situation. It's a border town. Uh, actually, this is actually crossing the border. Right, he, right here. See, that's right. Right where you cross into Mexico, it's it's. They make it look like it's kind of like a prison gate, man. It's like intense. It's like an intense moment. And then you get over there, and then here comes a border officer. He's like, 
what are your intentions in Mexico? Uh, just coming to Mexico, sir. <laughs> do you plan to do anything? They're not actually as intense as U.S. Border Patrol, but it's kind of an intimidating moment. It can be. So I'd imagine going to Nogales. I've heard Mexico's actually tightened the tightened down on Americans coming down there because so many Americans were retiring in Mexico into like these places like San Miguel de Allende or some of these other towns. And uh, I guess too many of them were not being able to make ends meet or something. And Mexico changed their visa program. So for the first time ever, Mexico's like, hey, if you're from north of the border, we don't know if we want you or not. Fill out some more paperwork. <laughs> so, so you know, it's one of those kind of things. And Nogales with the Border Patrol, uh, I don't know how heavy it is, but I haven't actually been through this one in a while. Uh, I like Nogales. I, I would say I would say I felt because I went to the American side of Nogales, right? Uh, we went down there to the American side. Uh, I think we did that on our two back video. If you go right here and you type in two back, because we do have a video from two back uh, right here. Southern Arizona towns, two back, Nogales, Patagonia and more. If you go to if you just type in the search two back, you can see Arizona, Southern Arizona towns right here. Uh, we went down to Nogales and I thought it was I definitely thought there was a tension in the air. There was a tension in the air on the U.S. side. Uh, it was like there was a lot of U.S. Border Customs Patrol down there. There was a lot of, uh, you could tell there was some like narco activity. I'm not going to sit here and say that I know what narco activity looks like because I really don't. But I could tell like there was some shady stuff going on in like this little hot zone right here. It seemed like as you got outside of the border, away from the border, things kind of loosened up. But you could tell there was like dudes on this side of the border that were kind of doing some narco trafficking. And then on this side of the border, you, there, there probably is that too. Uh, because, you know, this is this is one of the main entry points into the U.S. And that's, that is what it is. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I, I would say I would rather cross in Lukeville. If I'm going to cross the border, I'm going through Lukeville. And that's going to take me down into uh, Puerto Panasco. So I would say this border is probably a lot more easygoing Lukeville. Lukeville is a real small town on the U.S. border. Hardly anything there. But again, on the other side of the border is Sonoida. And the first thing you want to do when you get through Sonoida is get on the other side of Sonoida. I would say, you, you know, Sonoida is nothing really there. Maybe a taco stand if you're starving or a bathroom if you're starving. But I would rather just wait till Puerto Panasco anyway. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Pat says, thank you for your videos. We checked out the Patagonia Sonoida wineries. Loved it. Yeah. See, if you guys want to see that video, because she got that off our Arizona wine country video, probably. Uh, Southern Arizona towns, Tubac, Nogales, Patagonia, and more. Uh, I've also done Best Arizona Small Towns. We did part two. We talked about uh, more of the Southern Arizona towns than we did in the part one. Uh, but there you go. That's some good stuff to know if you're trying to go to southern arizona watch that video i would say um susan says lot susan says lots of murders in mexico as of late uh mexico really i think mexico got hit by the most violence in during the bush era the bush era was very violent in phoenix and very violent in mexico that was when the craziest stuff was happening but as you know, I just went to Mexico here recently in December on Island Hopper TV. If you go to this channel, you can see some of the videos that we did. We did Zihuatanejo, Guanajuato, and Santiago de Quietro. Uh, we just posted those videos because we were just there in December in Mexico. And I found out when I got back that I was actually in a dangerous place and I had no idea. So we went, we went to Mexico City. By the way, this Mexico City video is like going viral on our channel. I'm proud of us for that. It's got like already 55,000 views in two weeks. So people said, people in the comments said that we did the best Mexico City travel guide they've ever seen. I, I'm telling you, go read the comments. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not trying to flex that. Uh, but I am saying I was appreciative of the compliments. So Mexico City, you go north right here and you go up into this place called Quietro. Well, they have like the second highest uh, income. Uh, in Mexico. So I was like, that's got to be a nice area. We go there. Okay, cool. 
So what do you think we do after we go to San, uh, Quetro, Santiago de Quetro? We go to San Miguel de Allende. Why do we go to San Miguel de Allende? Because that's where all the expats live. They have like 10,000 Canadians and Americans down there in San Miguel de Allende. And it's a beautiful town. I mean, it's got tons of history. Like, I mean, it's got better Spanish history than any place I've ever seen in this whole area right here. Because they were silver miners. It was, it's like... The silver they were pulling out of Tombstone, they were pulling even more silver out of this area, okay? Even the Aztecs were using this area for um, silver. But then we went over to Guanajuato, and I'm like, in Guanajuato, I just did a quick search on Guanajuato, and it said, yeah, it checks out, go to Guanajuato. And then I heard that they've had like a recent surge in uh, cartels in Guanajuato. And the crazy thing is, they, what they were doing was, if a police officer made an arrest of someone in the cartel, they were going to the house of the police officer and like terrorizing the family of the police officer. That is like ultimate, like dangerous stuff. When you have cartels like uh, pressing law enforcement like that, where they're going to their house, that makes it to where law enforcement has to be corrupted. And that makes it to where they're no longer able to enforce the law. And in Mexico, they have that kind of stuff happening. And Guanajuato is one of those places. Now, that stuff kind of trickles over into other parts of Mexico. Overall, Mexico's safe, but it's that cartel activity because of why? Why do they have it? Because there's a demand in the United States for what? Narcotics. Because people in the United States can't get enough of the nose candy, they can't get enough of the opium, they can't get enough of it, and so that creates the cartels in Mexico. If y'all stop doing all these different types of narcotics, then there wouldn't be a cartel problem in Mexico and then everyone would want to live in Mexico because Mexico's awesome. <laughs> it's the cartels, man, they're dangerous. Like, they're, they're, they're the mafia. Um, someone said, we drove 14 hours deep into Chihuahua, Mexico through Juarez. There's definitely military, but it's it felt safe. Yeah, I heard that, because uh, there's a lot of people, they want to drive into Mexico. They want to go through uh, this area. They go through like Brownsville, Matramos, uh, Matamoros, Matamoros, sorry. And then they go through this whole area all the way down into Mexico City and through Veracruz and Mexico City. It's one of the safe, it's one of the faster ways to do it. Like if you did a border crossing in Nogales and tried to drive through uh, Chihuahua or Durango or Sinaloa, uh, Nayarit or Jalisco, Michoacan into Mexico City, it'll take a lot longer because there's more mountains. This area is flat, so it's kind of just like a straight shot. So people usually go the flat route instead of through the mountains. Uh, but he was saying he was going through Chihuahua. I've actually never, I don't think I've ever really been to Chihuahua. The, I was trying to get up into Chihuahua and I was trying to go to Durango because of Pancho Villa. I wanted to go explore the history of uh, Pancho Villa. But there's a really beautiful canyon out here. It's like a, this is literally Grand Canyon 2.0 out here. They have a big canyon. Anyone know the name of it? I think it's, uh, what's that big canyon in Mexico? They, I think they even have a train that you can take through there, and it's just spectacular. It's beautiful. But it's close to Chihuahua. Anyway, so we'll get off the Mexico subject. Even though there's a big connection between Arizona and Mexico, it's our neighbor. Also, we used to be part of Mexico in Arizona. A lot of people don't realize that. But the reason we're the 48th state is because before that, this was all New Spain which is why they call it New Mexico. New Mexico is called New Mexico because that was the new part of Mexico. <laughs> this whole area, Santa Fe, New Mexico, for example, the oldest capital in the United States, older than Boston, older than whatever they got in South Carolina, North Carolina, New York, all those capitals. Santa Fe, New Mexico is the oldest capital. And the reason being is the Spanish were up there uh, dilly-dallying around along the Rio Grande. <laughs> they call it dilly-dallying. But the interesting thing is there is a spiritual connection that the indigenous people, the Navajos, the Hopis, the people of this region identified with between Santa Fe, the Four Corners, and Sedona. So they would they were nomadic. They would go in between Santa Fe, uh, the Four Corners area, because there's a really beautiful place out here called uh, Canyon de Shea. So Canyon de Shea right here, beautiful area in Arizona. But they would go in between that area, the Canyon de Shea area, and then into Sedona, back and forth. Copper Canyon, yeah, that's the one. Copper Canyon, uh, Baraca del Cobre. Hey, that's kind of cool because that's the name of my uh, the clothing company that we've got going on. It's called Cobre. And the reason I picked the name Cobre 
assuming that the, what is it called? The uh, trademark goes through with the USPTO, Cobra Clothing, we'll see if it does. That's the name as of now, um, is because Arizona is the copper state. So it was like, what are you gonna call it? The copper state, you know, whatever. Cobra is copper, Copper Canyon. Someone says, go Sun. Suns are one of the best teams in the NFL. I'm still, I, right now, most of my attention is focused or on the in the NBA, one of the best teams in the NBA. One of, my attention right now is on the Cardinals going into the playoffs. So right now I'm a big go Cardinals mode. But Copper Canyon, um, let's see here. Copper, it's in Chihuahua. There we go. Yeah, this whole area right here, just south of Arizona. It kind of looks like Arizona, right? I mean, this is this is like Grand Canyon 2.0. But look at this. They got this cable car you could take down there. A lot of you gringos don't even know about that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, of course you know. Uh, but here's the train. You could ride this train through here. And they even got these like lookout points and stuff like that. By the way, I'm a gringo, so I can say gringo because I get called gringo all the time when I go down to Mexico. Yo, gringo or wedo. They call me wedo or gringo. Okay. So I'm just basically like, that's my name. They don't even know my name. So my name is gringo. So when I say gringo, I don't mean it in an offensive way. So anyone who gets offended by being called gringo, it's just what they call you. They could call you, hey, American, but no, they don't. <laughs> but anyway, look at the train here. It's cool, right? So this is, this is another canyon. That's in Chihuahua. Um, tell them to call you Poppy next time. Yeah, I know, right? I just joke around and be like, no, me amo Poppy. Uh, Poppy Chulo. They'll, they'll, I know for a fact they'll laugh every time. Like, it, actually, when you go down to Mexico, sense of humor in Latin America will get you further than anything, you know, be, aside from your money. Your money is the number one thing, but sense of humor is the number one, the, the number two thing to getting through Mexico. So if you have a sense of humor, you're gonna do great in Mexico and Latin America, just joking around. If you don't know how to joke around and you're too serious, uh, Mexicans or uh, Latinos are gonna kind of be like, oh man, this guy, this is typical snobby, stuck up American that they don't like. So if you go there and you got like a nice sense of humor, you'll get along just fine in Mexico as a gringo, no problem. Um, can you recommend a video tour, walking tour? Which one, Paradise Valley? Yeah, we got Paradise Valley walking tour. Uh, well, I, Paradise Valley is more of a driving. You don't really walk in Paradise Valley. Paradise Valley, Arizona. Oh man, I'm having a hard time spelling right now. So we did this one, Paradise Valley, Arizona's most expensive city. Uh, I thought I did a second one on Paradise Valley, but I guess I didn't. But yeah, Paradise Valley is really expensive. You gotta have big money for Paradise Valley. Jeremy says, Kyler Murray has what it takes to take the Cardinals to the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, but he's actually having some problems in the red zone right now. Cardinals execution in the red zone is not so hot. All right, we got 187 likes. Okay, 40, yeah, 100, let's get it over 200. If you haven't already liked the video, hit the likes and I'll keep going. Cause it's Friday night. What else do I need to be doing besides having a conversation about Arizona? during this situation we got going on in the world. Or I could just go down to the casino and just put some money in the slot machine. Yeah, Oro Valley, that's another place. Oro is gold in Spanish. Rico, Oro Rico. We're, we should name a place in Arizona called Oro Rico, gold rich. Like Puerto Rico, port of riches. Anyways, back to the videos we go. Uh, and I'm a Giants. Oh, wait. Brady getting eighth ring. Let's no debate that. Um, I don't know about Brady getting that because they just had that big problem with Antonio Brown. They have no receiving. They have no receiving core. I don't know how Brady throws for over 400 yards with no receivers and Gronkowski. <laughs> I mean, what? They got Mike Evans back or they got Godwin back? I mean, maybe then he's then set. I mean, but Antonio Brown, that's that was a big loss. Phoenix Light says, I appreciate the content. I do real estate. You're very knowledgeable. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, a lot of real estate agents actually watch this channel to get information about Arizona uh, from me. And um, that's cool because they're using it as an information resource. That's the whole point of this channel is an information resource. I've been, I was born and raised in Arizona and my dad took us all around as kids all across Arizona. I mean, we went everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> New Mexico, even we went to Mexico. We went to, all over California. I mean, been to every single one of these, well, not everywhere. 
Let's see if there's one place in Arizona that I haven't been that I need to check out. Let me see. Okay, I can tell you right now, I haven't really explored around the Hopi Reservation. There's a Third Mesa. That's a place I'd like to go, but I've never been to Third Mesa. This whole area right here, is probably north of Winslow, uh, but in here they have Third Mesa. You can't go there unless, basically, unless you're invited. I mean, because it's, it's a reservation. But Third Mesa is actually uh, a nice place that I'd like to check out. And if you get if you get invited, you could talk to the locals, the Hopis. And if they like you, they'll tell you, they'll show you around, but they might not like you because <laughs> you're not uh, really welcome there. It's not that they're mean or anything. They're just like, you took everything from us. At least let us have this in peace. You know, it's kind of like, you know, because there's a resentment about, you know, whose land is this dating back for many years. Right. But no, I, I would say every time I've gone to the Hopi Reservation or the Navajo or anywhere up there, I'm always getting along with all of the indigenous people of Arizona. They're always so friendly to me, more friendly than I deserve, honestly. I mean, I even when I go up into um, like Apache Sitgreaves, like up in here in, in a Fort Apache Reservation, uh, driving through here, you know, the locals at the convenience store, the locals in the town, you know, I, I'm always like, well, I don't know what to expect. Are they going to say, get off my land? Or what are they going to say? And they're just so nice. So nice. I mean, you're, you're just like, wow, these are nice people. So I'm not. I'm just saying that if you go up there starting to think that, you know, you're entitled to all this stuff and, and they don't reciprocate that, it might be because something you're doing. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I would say all of the Native Americans that I ever encounter are always friendly. I haven't had any problems. Um Ella says, avoid HOAs. What's the best place to open an ice cream shop in Scottsdale, rent or buy? Well, there's already a bunch of uh, ice cream shops in Scottsdale on Scottsdale Road, if you go like right here. <laughs> I mean, there's like a couple of them. I'm not trying to put down your idea. So definitely not downtown Scottsdale because there's already like Hagen dazs Old Scottsdale, Shakes and Cones. You can see, look at how many ice cream stores there are. <laughs> there's a lot right here. Pussycat Gelato. That's a heck of a funny name, man. That is a funny name for a for a place. <laughs> that, I'm not kidding. That's the name. You guys probably think I'm joking, but I just saw that and I was like, and they got like 4.8 reviews. So there we go. If you guys are looking for a great ice cream place, go to Pussycat Gelato. How they got that name, I have no idea. And they even got a chick as the, that's a unique, unique. I think I've seen these guys in um, Bisbee. When I was in Bisbee, they had something like that. Let's see if I go down to Bisbee. Man, we just keep this conversation moving, don't we? Uh, down here, right around here in Bisbee. If you guys haven't been to Bisbee, it's at least worth a tour. Like, try to get a tour. Uh, as someone who travels a lot, I used to be all about, like, just freelancing, right? Just freestyle. Just go out there, do it my way. But one thing I've noticed, if you can, even as a local whether it's in Arizona or someplace else, doing tours is great because they have a whole itinerary for you to do. So if you do go to Bisbee or Tombstone and you freelance, you might walk away from there going, oh, this wasn't as good as I thought. But if you go to Bisbee and you actually like get the tour and you do the tour, the town tour, whatever they offer, make sure you get the one with the high reviews, right? If you get one that has low reviews, well, I'm sorry, I can't help you there. But, you know, typically if they've got like 50 reviews on TripAdvisor on Google and they're like, you know, over 4.4, 4.2 per stars, it's probably going to be a good tour. If they're lower than four, I don't know what to say. But, you know, they got old Bisbee's Ghost Tour. But if you go down there, you might like it. I liked it. Um, I've always liked it. I just wish it had more vibrance because uh, it is such a cool town. But this is Bisbee, right? You know, and you just kind of come off the freeway right there. And then you just cruise right here and they have this store. Let me see if I can find it. It's right here. Pussycat Gelato. I knew it. They have one in Bisbee. Okay. I was like, I knew I had seen that sign before. Italian ice cream. So they have one in Scottsdale and they have one in Bisbee. Cool company. I guess the laws of the universe and the stars align for them to get free advertising today. <laughs> um... Is the water reserve okay for residents? Oh, that's a subject that just never dies, isn't it? Uh, so the, okay. Number one, I am i don't work for SRP, Salt River Project, and I don't work for Colorado, Central Arizona Project, which is off the Colorado River. 
Uh, every person that I've talked to who's supposedly an expert says Phoenix has enough water. There's enough water in Phoenix. And I believe it. This is when I would start to get concerned about the water supply in Phoenix, okay? And I can show you guys exactly how I know this. This is the top reservoir. This is Roosevelt Lake. This is the Salt River. If this started to get empty, which it hasn't, okay, this is a big old reservoir too. It's bigger than Lake Mead, all right? If this started to get lower, I would be concerned. But then if this one got low, then it would be even worse. And then if like it got to the point where uh, Saguaro Lake was bone dry, that would be a problem. But guess what? They're all pretty much doing great. Roosevelt Lake might go down in the summer and then up in the winter. Um, but again, the, the, the flow of water that comes in here is off of the White Mountains. And the White Mountains is called the White Mountains because why? They get snowpack. I mean, if you go up here and you talk to some of the locals in this area of Pine Top Lakeside or Mount Baldy, this whole area, it's actually Fort Apache Indian Reservation. You can't really go there uh all around there but there's like white river and fort apache you can go there they got a casino if you want to go up there just go to stay at the casino <laughs> i think they have a hotel at that casino but anyway you take us 60 right here this is where the headwaters begin for the salt river okay i think that's where the headwaters begin for salt river but that's why they got so much uh water and this canyon right here is that salt river canyon no that's sibiqui creek hang on where's salt so Salt River Canyon is a beast. I mean, it's it's like Grand Canyon 2.0, for real, for real. Uh, let's see, where's the Salt River Canyon? Uh, Salt River Canyon, man, it's one of those canyons. I've been there uh, recently. Salt River Canyon. Uh, they wanted me to go up here. They wanted me to go back down there. Um, I think it's this. Yeah, it's right here. It's right along the highway. You actually do a you do a cross a switchback right here the craziest road right here this is a crazy road man like truckers are always burning out their brakes on this highway us 60 this goes right through the reservation it's a mean canyon because you gotta you gotta descend into the bottom where the salt river is and it's a mean mean canyon you could see it look you could see the canyon here but let's see uh the switchbacks and the descent is just terrible on the brakes make sure your brakes are up to snub here let's see here yeah that's that's the canyon that's a that's just a look at the salt river canyon from while you're going down and then you cross the bridge down here like right here the salt Rock river rest stop we stopped right there up oh, they got apache falls right here you can't really go down there All right, let me see if I can get out on that bridge. So this is the bridge going across the uh, Salt River here, but this, this, the river that you drink your water from comes from this Salt River. This is where the drinking water comes from. But this is a very mighty river with lots of potential if it carved out this canyon here. This, pic, this, this Google Street View is good, but it's not doing it justice. This is a massive canyon. And it carved right through this, this, um, so this is where your drinking water comes from. Majority of it from the salt river. And then compare that, uh, pair that up with, uh, the Verde river. And that's where you get this, uh, dam right here. So you have the granite reef dam. And if you look around the granite reef dam, this is basically, okay, let's put it like this. This is like one of the most precious resources in all of Arizona. If something happened to this, uh, granite reef dam, that i'm surprised they don't have high security around here honestly and you guys can this checks out straight up man um this this is it right here granite reef dam though they pump the canal water up here to scottsdale they pump the canal water down to um uh mesa so this right here if you guys even knew the importance of this dam i mean it's huge that's the old arizona dam so yeah Let's see here. Someone said, if you ever get bored and want to come on my segment, Schiller's Corner, we can talk housing, inflation, economic dystopia in general. Hey, that kind of sounds fun, actually. Um, just kind of just sitting here podcasting <laughs> and just going back and forth. Um, can you speak on New Kingman? Uh, New Kingman? I don't know anything about New Kingman, but I'll take a look in a second. How busy is Sky Harbor International Airport? It's too busy. 
It's way too busy. They're actually building a second airport in Phoenix, a new terminal out in uh, by Phoenix Mesa Gateway. They have a new terminal. I was trying to look it up online to see what the status is and see what airlines are going to be flying in there. Hopefully United or American or one of the major carriers besides Allegiant. But Phoenix Sky Harbor is one of the busiest airports in the country, and it's not very big. It's big. Like, the problem with Sky Harbor, this is a big problem. I probably have been delayed on the tarmac of Sky Harbor more than anywhere else. And if it's July and you're stuck on the tarmac for an hour or two hours because of congestion on in Sky Harbor and the airplane just so happens to be an older DC or a 737, I was almost going to say a DC-10, 737, an older one or an older Airbus, and the air conditioner is not working quite right, it can be pretty miserable in July on the tarmac in Phoenix Sky Harbor. And that tells you there's a lot of congestion at Sky Harbor. It's not, it's, and they, they can't really grow the airport. It's not like they could add an, I guess they could. I mean, maybe that's why they don't ever build anything over here because this is like the worst area of Phoenix. Well, they have the Phoenix uh, swap mark or park, park and swap. I was actually gonna make a video about Phoenix uh, swap meets. If you guys think I should go there, to the park and swap or to the swap meet. And I'm not hating on any of that. I think it's cool. I like those. I like markets like that, right? But they don't really build anything significant around the airport. And that might be wise because they might one day have to clear this out and build another runway. That might be it, you know? Here's a pretty cool old Arizona uh, archaeological site, Pueblo Grande, if you guys are looking for that. It's a Ho'okam. So right here they have a... Uh, archaeological site right there Pueblo Grande if you guys want to go check it out it's right there in the heart of Phoenix uh Ahwatukee is nice yeah what did Jim Brown say everybody's all saying something about Jim Brown but I don't even see a Jim Brown comment Jim Jim Mooney oh he said California refugees are fleeing to Arizona their money and political influence were to destroy us with rampant crime inflation banning horses and guns and people crapping in the street since the woke can't learn. Oh my God. I was like, what did he say? And I had to go up there and read it. That's what he said. But um, no, I don't, I don't think that, look, big cities have, every big city has its own drama and unique situation that happens to it. Uh, so Phoenix is gonna, you know, it's gonna take on similar characteristics of big cities like Los Angeles, New York, as it gets larger because big cities, you know, have big problems uh i don't think there's a big the only big city in the world that i've ever been to that has their stuff together is singapore <laughs> but they also have like really filtered who they let in to live in singapore um in in the sense that not everyone from countries surrounding it can get in there because it's an island and they have really strict guidelines to get into uh, singapore probably the most strict immigration guidelines of anywhere but that city hasn't really figured out. That was like the smartest city I've ever been to is Singapore. Dubai's got a pretty smart city also, but same kind of situation going on there. Um, in, in America, probably one of the most sophisticated big cities that I've seen clean and everything is Phoenix. It doesn't get much more sophisticated and clean in terms of a smart city, smart, intelligent design than Phoenix. People will say, well, oh, take a look at Houston, no. Take a look at Seattle, no. Well, Seattle's kinda up there, uh, but Phoenix, yeah, we have our problems. I mean, if you only focus on the negatives, of course you're gonna find a lot of bad things about Phoenix. Someone was talking about, don't go down to Tolleson, don't go down to Mary, Maryvale. Sure, you could say that. Um, Ray's Off-Roading says, where is the best trail for dirt bikes? Oh, dude. Yeah, we talked about this on the last video. Thanks for getting me off that subject because that was just harping, right? I really like this area out here, right here. Granite Mountain Trailhead, uh, Browns Mountain, this whole area. It's just off of, it, it, you got to go Pima Road to Dynamite or Scottsdale Road to Dynamite, which turns into Rio Verde Drive. This whole area is really cool for uh, mountain bikes. There's some other areas like Cave Creek Regional Park is good for mountain. I don't know if you could take mountain bikes up there, actually. You might want to look into that. I know I've done some hiking up there. I didn't see any uh, mountain bikes so, though, but this is a cool area. Let's see, they got anyone, let's see. Yeah, you could take bikes out there and horses. 
So that's a cool trail. That's a cool trail right there. I did that one. And then there's some more out here like the Spear S Ranch. So like this area in New River, Cave Creek, New River's got some cool trails for sure. You might be able to do some in the Santan Mountains, but this, I'm not impressed with the Santan Mountains. Like Santan Regional Park, I mean, it's it's close to Queen Creek and Santan Valley, closer than everywhere else, but I, I don't think it's like that amazing, okay? <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see if they got any signs. Yeah, you could do some cycling out there in uh, the Santan Mountains. So hopefully that helps you guys see a little bit about what's out there. What's the best roads for spirited driving? Okay, that's a good question. By spirited driving, I assume you mean like very enchanting. Okay, so I'm just gonna assume you mean enchanted drives in Arizona. So the one that I usually always start with is the Oak Creek Canyon from Flagstaff to Sedonia, Sedona. You have I-17, don't take the I-17 route. You go down 89A. This is Oak Creek Canyon. So right here, this is where Slide Rock is. Now, it's a one-way road in each direction. They're not going to widen it. They're going to protect it, but you can get a little bit congested, especially in the summertime on the weekends. But if you go there, like, during the weekday on an off-season, really nice place, uh, the Oak Creek Canyon Drive. Uh, I personally thought the drive in southern Arizona from Tucson, like this one, where you go the 19, it's not too, it starts to get pretty when you get south of Green Valley and you go into Tubac, and you get out there and you actually walk around Tubac and Rio Rico, but not not too much in Rio Rico. There's one area in Nogales that I that I stopped by that's pretty cool. It's like a riparian. It's like a it's part of the uh, De Anza Trail. It's called the De Anza Wetlands. It's just north of Nogales, and then you wrap over here and you you kind of cruise up here and you get to Patagonia Lake. Uh, people like th this is like RVing. You could do like a camping trip out here, right? Patagonia Lake, you know, camp here for a night, cruise out, and then you kind of roll through Sonoida, which I think is a nice area because it's the Arizona wine country. And in the summertime during like the monsoon season, it's very green up there, very green. And then you could probably head north from there and then do another route another time uh, going through Bisbee. The, this is a really cool mountain range. Thanks to the 241 people who hit the likes. If we can get over 250, I'll keep going. If we go to 270, I'll really keep going. But if you haven't liked the video, please do so if you're enjoying this content. Thank you. Um, but Bisbee, nice, okay? I there, But my favorite little area out on this side of town is in the Chiricahuas, Chiricahua Mountain Range. We actually did a video. So this whole little area right here, Chiricahua Peak, they got Johnny Ringo's grave, Camp Rucker. But the area that I like to go, I'd camp one night in the Chiricahuas, maybe two nights in the Chiricahuas. Uh, do some hiking around this area. They got a lot of hikes out here. And then, because I don't think you can go the other side, you go towards, I don't think you could drive to, uh, I don't think you can get to the other side through here. But there's some cool places in Cave Creek. So they have a place called Cave Creek down here near Portal. We've talked about Portal a couple times. We have a video on this channel specifically to Portal. Okay, uh, let's see. Where is it? It's usually at the top here. I featured it. Um, Arizona road trip. Oh, if you want to do Arizona road trip, just look at all these videos. See, we did Arizona road trip to Roosevelt Lake and Apache Lake, the White Mountains. We went up to the White Mountains. You just go to the homepage and you can see it. But uh, let's see here. Oh, second best road trip. There's another one, Mount Lemon. I would say a spirited drive is Mount Lemon. So I just showed you the Chiricahuas, nice little area to drive around, but Mount Lemon is right next to Tucson. So it's like something you do on a Tucson trip. You go up here into the Catalinas, you take this road right here. This is uh, Mount Lemon Highway. I was hoping it had a number, but it's cool. This is a cool drive up to Mount Lemon. You know, I would say exploring the Catalinas I liked, uh, I'd buy, I'd buy land out here in Oracle. If, if, if you're a rural guy, getting land in Oracle is cool. It's a real good place. It's right next to the biosphere. You guys remember the biosphere? Remember Biodome? You, I think you could tour this place, the biosphere. We used to go here in, uh, in high school. They took us on a, 
on a, what do they call that? Field day, field day trip to the biosphere. <laughs> we couldn't go in at the time though. They didn't let us in. We could only go to the outside, but it was cool because it was the biosphere, but that's near Oracle. I like this area right here. I mean, you have to really appreciate the desert to appreciate this drive, but this, this uh, I think it's the San Pedro. It's like a wash now, but um, this is a cool little wash. And uh, it connects, yeah, it's the San Pedro. And it connects to the Gila River. The Gila River is a big time uh, water source for Arizona. In fact, I'll tell you a little interesting history about the Gila. So the Gila originates in New Mexico. So the Gila River is a big time uh, place, okay? But they dammed it up up here at the Coolidge Dam. You know, the President Coolidge, Calvin Coolidge, I think is his name. But they created this, this lake here and it's, uh, what's the name of the lake? Um, oh man, can't even remember the name of the lake. I, I know it, but I'm forgetting it right now because I've got so many things going through my mind. Oh man, what's the name of this lake? Cochise Lake, is it? Anyway, this lake right here, Gila River, or San Carlos Lake, I think. But anyway, when the Gila River was allowed to run free this sucker made it all the way down to the to the sea of cortez but that's why they built this area right here florence was built on the banks of the gila river so 100 years ago florence was a great place to live because it was right on the banks of the gila in fact they had a steamboat that would go up and down the gila river because it was such a wide deep river but they dammed it up so the gila doesn't make it down here anymore i mean i think it stops like right here it gets a little bit of green because there's some springs, but it this is a crazy wilderness to explore, by the way. It doesn't look too good from the sky, but it is great. Anyway, yeah, so the Gila River, this is where this is an interesting history that I'm going to share with you right here. So this is what was interesting about Buckeye. So the reason Buckeye was so amazing was because uh the Gila the the Salt River came through here through Phoenix. And it met right here at Buckeye. And it met the Gila River. So the Gila River comes up this way. The Salt River comes this way. And then the Agua Fria came in right here. And they all kind of converged right in Buckeye. And so Buckeye was a big farming area. And you can see they still use the soil. But it's almost, it's fertility is almost dried up. But that's what people don't know about Buckeye. Is that was where all the major rivers, you could almost call it three rivers, right? Yeah, well, actually four rivers because... The Verde River pours into the Salt River just before it gets into Mesa, right? And so the Gila River, if you go right here, there's a town called the Gila Bend. Gila Bend's a, a town because it's the Gila Bend in the river. This is where the Gila River bent. So that's why it's called Gila Bend. But you can see all this river, all those four rivers, basically, the Verde, Agua Fria, the Salt River and the Gila River all made it down to meet the Colorado River right here in Yuma. So that's why Yuma is like this breadbasket of like uh, fertility is because five big time rivers, basically, well, the Gila River, by the time it gets to Yuma, it's just the Gila. It's just the Gila at that point. And it needed that extra water that came from the Salt River because it was very hot and dry through here. You'll see even there's petroglyphs around here. Native Americans were living along this side of the Gila River. Anyway, you get down into Yuma and you can see all of this fertility right here. All of these farms, even though it's really hot, is because there was so much sentiment, sediment in the water from right here. And it all poured into here, which is the Sea of Cortez. So the same river that carved out the Grand Canyon, the same river that carved out the Salt River Canyon, all that water met right here in the Sea of Cortez or the Gulf of California and carved this out. That's why you have the Baja over here and mainland Mexico over here because so much water was coming through this area, it eroded. And if they didn't stop the Colorado or the Gila from dumping in, you would probably have uh, I mean, it was basically eating away at all this. Like, this would probably be beachfront property in the Salton Sea right now, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, because it was carving out. Look, at you could see the River Delta was still carving out this area. And then they stopped the water flow and the erosion stopped. But, I mean, this was, they were, the Baja was going to get ready to keep growing. So you could almost say, some, I got something interesting that's going to blow your mind. 
Do you guys know why it's called California? Because it's named after the Cali Khalifa, okay? So there was a Khalifa, I'll show, you, I'll show you the history. The name California. So you guys know of the Islamic Caliphate, um, but there's a, there was a queen. So the name California is primarily a female name of Spanish or, origin that means hot furnace or mythical land. There are some theories that of how it was named, but most likely it derived from the old Spanish Calit Forne, meaning hot furnace. But uh, the, the, the Spanish explorers after the fr fictional island, so they thought when they arrived in California that it was an island. So they thought they were in an island. Isn't that crazy? They thought this was an, that California was an island because they were going up and down the Baja wrapping around there and they were going through the Pacific and they were like, oh, this must be an island. Because remember, this area right here is called um, Baja California Sur and Baja California. So this whole thing, this is uh, Alta California. So all this was known as California. So California Sur, Baja California Norte, and Alta California, which means tall California. And the Spanish thought all of this was an island. So they thought uh, California was an island. But they named it after a Moorish queen. And I know I'm seeing different stories here, but it keep, they keep going back to the, uh, the idea. So let's see here. Okay, so was California a black queen? So in the novel, Khalifa is a pagan warrior queen who ruled over the kingdom of black women living on the island of California. Okay, so there's this idea that the name, the Spanish gave the name after a Moorish queen uh, named Khalifa. And, and so Moors obviously are Islam, Muslim. And so that was where it got its name because of, they thought this was an island uh, area right here. So I think it's very interesting how it got its name because uh, it's got uh, a Moorish influence in the name from Spain. So uh, that's interesting to know about California. As we talked about how Arizona got its name, which means spring from uh, Arizona. There's a place even down here called Arizona uh, in, what is this, Sinaloa? No, Sonora, Sonora, Mexico. The place Arizona gets its name is from uh, a place out here, like right around here. And it means uh, spring. That's where it got, is, uh, sp something spring. <laughs> Can't remember exactly off the top of my head right now, but that's where Arizona gets its name, from spring, from Sonora, Mexico. But this whole area ended up taking on the name Arizonac. Arizona, someone said Arizona. Um, someone said, so it has nothing to do with the Islam, hence the pagan queen. Uh, I don't know exactly. I know that it was the word, the, the, the research that I had heard from the locals in California who were telling me this history, as well as the internet research, uh, it had something to do with the word caliphate, California caliphate. And it also had something to do with a Moorish queen. Um, so obviously the story you know the, the, once you get into stories like this there's all it's always like well is it this is it that and then you you know you hear all these different stories like even if you look at the name the, the name origin of arizona you have this uh mixed variety of stories but the the locals in california were telling me that it had something to do with a moorish queen because they thought it was an island and this was actually verified that it was an island it's like uh Los Angeles, for example, I don't know if you guys have been to L.A., but you guys know that L.A. has a huge problem with smog. They get a lot of smog, like smog just builds up in this, it's like from San Fernando Valley south into the valley of Los Angeles. And the indigenous people called it uh, the land of fuego, the land of fire, the valley of fire. And the reason was, was because they had so much smoke that would build up in there from all the fires. When there were fires in the Sierra Nevadas and stuff, uh, so the California wildfires have always been there. It's not something that's just unique here. California has always burned and that smoke would always come down from those fires and, and kind of just hang out in the Valley of Los Angeles. But uh, as far as the story of California, I'm not going to say that it's 100% historically accurate. You guys can look it up. But there's something about the, uh, the, the word califa, califa. Khalifa, California, and a queen, a Moorish queen. Uh, for those of you who don't know where the Moors were from, these were the people who came from North Africa 
and they they um, inter they intermarried and uh, kind of in a way conquered uh, Italy, the Roman Empire. They 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 coexisted with Italy and they coexisted with Spain. And in fact, Muslims or Islam actually occupied the Iberian Peninsula in Spain. And that I know for a fact because I went to the museum in Barcelona where they talked about the Moorish influence. And so that's why sometimes when you go to Spain, you'll see a lot of designs that you see from Morocco. So Spain and Morocco, very close. I mean, the only thing separating them is, a, is the Straits of Gibraltar. But uh, the history of the Moors is very prevalent in Italy, the Roman Empire, Spain, Portugal. And they have a couple different uh, towns there that you'll know, like Algiers and Tunis uh, in Tunisia, that are all part of the Moor Moors kingdom. But that all carried over because the Spanish, who were like a melting pot of Muslims and Christians and Catholics and all these different things, and they all lived on this peninsula that was forward operating post, Portugal, Port of the Gauls, uh, was forward operating post to basically seafaring go around the world from Spain. I mean, what better country to be than at the tip of this peninsula to go into the rest of the world and explore, right? Spain. That's why Spanish explorers were so prevalent. But when they were landing here, what are they doing? They were naming things after places around Spain and they were influenced by the Moors. So yes. Yeah, it, it, California was a map, but you could see if you're an explorer and you don't have satellite imagery, you're going up and down here and you're like, yeah, it's definitely an island. And you're and you're encountering a Colorado River that had not yet been dammed up with lakes and Gila River not dammed up with lakes. So, yeah, I mean, you're going up there. You're like, oh, yep, this has got to be this. You're going up. They're going up here. Colorado River is not dammed up. Gila River is not dammed up there. They could probably take boats up here. So, yeah, they probably thought, well, if you keep going, it'll crossover it's got to be an island <laughs> you know but yeah that's why they thought california was an island someone said wish you would do your lives on your ig oh i don't I, people don't follow the ig for the same reason they follow the youtube uh okay so someone said dmt breathing queen khalifa Kingdom was said to be remote land rich in gold and pearls inhabited by beautiful black women who wore gold armor and lived like Amazon, says Kuora. Yeah, see, so that's the story. So um, that's basically the name, uh, origin of California. Anyway, this is Arizona, so. <laughs> uh, oh my God, I really wish high school would have been this great. With what? Uh, why is it smoggy in Arizona right now? So the reason it's smoggy in Arizona, well, number one thing that stops smog in Arizona is um, rain. So whenever we get rain, it always pats down the you know particles in the air that are causing that. But smoggy in Phoenix? Is it smoggy in Phoenix? I don't know about all that. Um, in the summertime, it's terrible because you get fires. So all the smoke comes in from California, from northern Arizona, and then you have the pollution and then the lack of rain. So it gets real bad air quality in the summer. But right now, I don't know exactly why it would have bad air quality because we just had rain about a week ago. So. Oh, someone, Susan says you would make a cool geography teacher. Actually, when I was in college, I, I majored in history. <laughs> so that's how I know, uh, uh, not majored. I have a political science degree or a social science degree, but I minored in history, uh, political science and so, so sociology. My master's was in uh, cybersecurity. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you do a degree like that, you're kind of like, why did you even go to school? Like, well, it does teach you a lot. It teaches you a lot about data. Yeah. What kind of history? Um, well, the history they teach. I mean, everything from theology. You know, they touch on a little bit of everything. They touch on theology. They touch on... Uh, when, I, when I was going to school, it was in California, so it was California history. That's why I know so much about California history, because when I was in the Navy, I was going to college. <laughs> and they don't have a... They don't have a a waterfront in Arizona. So all the Navy bases are in like California for the Pacific fleet. Uh, 
So I went to college out there and they, I had to take California history and they talk about the 49ers and the gold rush and the Native American people who were there on the islands of Catalina Islands, these Los Angeles people. So that's how I know a lot about that history. The reason I know so much about Arizona history is from going to museums and going all around the state and talking to locals. Uh, Christian says, Jeff, when I started watching your channel, I thought you were a realtor. No, I'm not a realtor. I don't have my realtor license and I don't really want it. I thought about getting it at some point. Or I mean, I thought about it before. Um, schools in Arizona is a touchy subject. Yeah, no one likes to talk about schools in Arizona because, uh, why did someone ask, where did you go to school in, oh, in California? I went to school at one of the, I don't want to say, the reason I don't like to give away all my personal details is because there's people out there who watch this channel who go and like do like full, they try to find out where I live. How do I know they try to find out where I live? Because I've had people show up at my door uh, who watch this channel who were trying to guess where I live because they saw my neighborhood, my old neighborhood, and they were trying to find me. Not to say anything mean, just to say hi, which is cool, which is fine. But I'm like, if people are trying to do that, I'm like, that's, in, that's not, you know, it's like, <laughs> that's why now I, now I would, if I was like, one of those celebrities like Elon Musk or something, which I'm not, I'm not even, even close, but like, I, I, I would say, don't show where those people live because then what happens is people go to their house, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's weird, but yeah, that's, so that's why I don't want to like give away all my personal details of like where I went to school, this and that. And like, you know, peekaboo says I'm a, d a documentary uh, junkie this is now my absolute favorite channel oh yeah no I watched so many documentaries and did so much research the one that's got my attention here recently the most recent is I've been studying this this area right here the from basically uh, Guatemala Belize Yucatan so there's the Mayans right and then I've also been interested in the Aztecs and one of the tribes that really caught my attention was the Olmec so you know about the Olmec uh the Olmec uh, people, they, they had these big skulls that they found in like Veracruz, right? So like one of the areas, Villa Hermosa, I think is where they have like Olmec. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about the Olmec, but uh, like there, there's like one, one area, San Lorenzo, Tinochitlan. So these are the Olmecs, right? And so uh, I, I became interested in knowing more about the Olmecs uh, because they're in between the Aztecs and the um, Mayans. And when I went down to Guatemala, which is essentially known as the Mayan capital, uh, Biosphere de um, Maya right here, they got Tikal right there. I, and I was looking at going to Belize. I was just like trying to figure it out. And I was like wanting to learn more about the Mayan calendar because I'll just tell you guys something really interesting. So I went to uh, Guatemala in this place called Antigua. And so right here is this town called antigua it was the capital of central america no one in today's generation hardly even knows this and so when i was down in antigua uh i was like so impressed because it was the old spanish capital guatemala was the the whole area of central america was called guatemala a lot of people don't even think about guatemala and this area right here was known as grand colombia which was colombia venezuela all the way into ecuador all known as grand colombia this was guatemala and so Antigua was the capital. And nowadays it's just this like historical town. I actually have a video on Island Hopper TV about Antigua. You guys got to go see this video uh, right here. So Antigua and Lake Atitlan. Okay. But this is where I really started to become more interested in the Mayans. So the Mayans were living here before the Spanish showed up and they have a museum there and they gave me this right here, which is a piece of jade. So I went to the Jade Museum, which I would have normally uh, skipped over, but I was with a local guide, a Mayan guy who was showing us around Antigua. And I was like, you know, uh, this is cool. So we'll keep doing the video and we'll keep checking this place out. And so we go to this Jade Museum, right? And the, the guy starts telling me all about the Mayan calendar and Jade. And the reason they liked Jade was number one, it was coming out of the ground there, but it was green. And green is considered a sacred color to the Mayans. So I was interested, why did they like green? And it had something to do with fertility. And the color green is the color of the forest. And also their bird 
the Quetzales. The Quetzales bird is this green bird, and it's actually named after the, the deity uh, Quetzalcoatl, for those of you who know about uh, the Aztecs. But anyway, so I'm not big into any sort of zodiacs or uh, horoscopes. I just know about, I, I, know, uh, I know that I'm a, you know, I know my uh, astrological sign, and I, you know, it's a Capricorn, so I know about that. But come to find out, the Mayans have uh, an astrological thing, and they they have one of the most accurate calendars uh, known as, but it's attached to the loon, lunar. So it's a lunar calendar. It's a moon calendar. And the one that we operate on in the Western world is the Gregorian calendar, which is a sun calendar. Every 365 days, uh, the sun comes back to the exact same place in the sky that you were born, and that's why they call it your birthday, because it's based off of the sun. Well, they go off of the lunar calendar, which is about 260 days. So, of course, naturally, I'm like, okay, tell me more about this Mayan calendar because it's, you know, they called the end of the world in 2012 or the end of times in 2012. And so, come to find out, they have their whole little thing that nobody really knows about in the Western world, including myself, that when you're born into this world, based on when you were born and the time you were born, it tells you what kind of person you're going to be. Anyway, so mine... Uh, is a K-A-N, a serpente, the serpent, which is unique because I don't like snakes typically. <laughs> but it, it, it was cool because it says, uh, it, it tells me a little bit more about what the Mayans would have suggested that I become. And it says, uh, the people born in this day are usually good public servants, politicians, physicists, or astronomers. <laughs> so I was just like... Um, and it says, if I, if I want to deflect bad energy, uh, make offerings, like give things away. So I was like, you know, that's kind of interesting. So I was like, well, what's my sister? What's my mom? So I was like trying to get their thing. Anyway, I found that to be interesting uh, just from a historical uh, perspective of that, you know, uh, learning more about the Maya. So I was like, well, what else did the Maya believe? You know, that's, that's basically what I took away from it. And then as I went up into uh, Mexico City, I was like, go to Tino Chitlan and uh, Texcoco and uh, Teotihuacan and all these places and seeing like the Aztec pyramids of Chichen Itza or the Mayan pyramids of Chichen Itza. So this has been the whole area that I'm trying to learn more about. Uh, you know, obviously going there, you get a whole different perspective than if you watch a History Channel documentary, but it's like you watch one History Channel documentary, you watch another documentary. So you watch 10 and then you just kind of aggregate the most common information out of those. And then that's more historically likely, right? That's like the common way that you determine what's fake and what's real is like historical commonality told the same story throughout. So, uh, but yes. The, the, the interesting thing about that that really hit me when I was in uh, Tulum, there's a place called Tulum, you guys already probably already know about Tulum, but there's an archeological site there. It's called Zona Archeological de Tulum. And the interesting thing here is they have, uh, what do they call, um, uh, the things that look into the sky, observatories. And so I'm, I'm down here at these observatories and I'm walking around the archaeological site in Tulum and I'm like, this is a really beautiful site. Like these people were living in a really beautiful place on planet Earth. So it hit me then. But when it really hit me, I was staying in Tulum Beach, this area right here. If you ever go to Tulum, do not go to Centro. This Tulum area, stay away from this area. It's not good. You go down to the beach in Tulum and this is called the Hotel Zone. And this place is fantastic. It's awesome. It's out of this world. It's better than Bali. It's Tulum. This is the real deal right here. This is Tulum, the beach, okay? And this is like, like I said, it's better than Bali. And I'm not joking. But if you go to, people, they go to Tulum, they go to this little area right here, and they're like, oh, I went to Tulum. It's no good. It's like, no, you didn't go, you, you got to go to Tulum Beach, this area right here where Esmeralda K is, okay? This is it right here. This is where... This is where all the beautiful resorts are, and are not the resorts, the hotels. They don't have any resorts down there, so there's no, there's no, uh, tour, there's no real like franchises down there. There's no corporations. It's all mom and pop, privately owned. And there's this guy by the name of Azulik. So Azulik is this this guy who's got like some amazing hotels in Tulum, and you can follow him on Instagram. His name is Roth Azulik. And he's like really down to earth, but he builds like, he takes like the things the Mayans taught and the indigenous people and he like integrates it into like a modern hotel. And uh, 
his properties, like they create things that Instagrammers go crazy for because it's like this really crazy stuff. But I follow him, Roth Azulik, on my personal channel. I don't know if I follow him on this one. But this guy is very cool. And he's down in Tulum, but he hangs out with the indigenous people. So he gets all these information. Like on this one, he was hanging out with indigenous down in Panama. And so the, the, the point that I'm making about all of this is that the indigenous people have a, a lot of things they can teach you and you can learn from them. Uh, you know, and it, you know, every, everything you learn, you take with a grain of salt, right? So like, just because you learn something from them doesn't all of a sudden make it gospel truth. It's just like when you go to India and you hang out with the Vedics or you hang out with the Hindus, it's like you're going to learn stuff from them, but does it become the gospel truth? You go, you know, so it's just like one more thing that you learn about and that adds to your memory bank of, in, of wisdom. So learning from the Mayans, learning from the Aztecs, learning from the Hindus, uh, learning from the Europeans, learning from Africa, learning from the Egyptians, going into Africa, like Tanzania, Kenya, going to the Middle East, going to all these places, going to China. Every single thing you're going to realize, you, you can't believe everything that you hear because it's like there's going to be cross stories. It's just different interpretations. So that's why I like to learn about all that history. And the reason I bring all this up is because you guys were talking about what it is that made it possible. And that's what it is. So, yes, I love the history of Arizona and I like how it correlates with uh, Mexico because this whole thing is like our brothers and sisters down in Mexico. If you live here, I mean, that's why so much of Phoenix and Arizona is like, uh, you know, it's a lot of Mexican culture here. We have a lot of it like the food, everything. Almost 300 likes. If it gets to 300 likes, we'll keep going. By the way, here's an interesting place. This place caught my attention in New Mexico. It's called Mescalero. And obviously, I don't know if I did the video yet. We, 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 we went to White Sands Missile Range, White Sands National Park. Uh, it's a really cool place because the sand is like silica sand. And you can like do a bunch of things like toboggan ride down there. It's like, it looks like snow, but it's, Anyways, it's called White Sands, right? We went there. We we made we collected the footage, but we never produced the video. But anyway, there's an area right next to it called Mescalero. And that caught my attention because do you guys know what mescaline is? So there was a there was a guy, this is this is hearsay, by the way, about the history of California and um New Mexico. I heard this from an old man who was sitting at a bar, you know, because you, you, you go sit down at a bar and you start talking to some old guy, you're drinking a beer, he might start telling you some history. He's kind of like, you know, you, you never know who you'll bump into and you never know what you can learn sitting at a bar, right? It's like when you watch this channel, you're kind of like in the situation where you're like, you feel like if you were drinking a beer with me at the bar and we we're having this conversation, it might be kind of interesting, right? You know, it's like people bump into me at the bar and we have conversations like this anyway. But this guy, he was teaching me about some stuff and I was just listening. He was talking about Mescalero, but he was talking about this guy by the name of Mescalot, Mescalero or Mescalero. Uh, anyway, supposedly there was this uh, guy who used to wander this land and they compared him to Jesus. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say it was Jesus because I'm not trying to get into that whole thing. But they said that Jesus roamed the Americas uh, I don't know if it was before or after he was in the other continent, other the other landmass. And so the indigenous people had a, a person named Mescalero or Mescal Mescalero. I can't remember his name exactly. I think it was Mescalero who they would see visions of this white light. It was like a white light that would come to them and it was like a spirit, you know, and um, it was like a spirit that would show up in like this blinding white light. And so when I saw that this was the Mescalero reservation, I was like, hmm, I wonder, because you know, mescaline, where does it come from? Not just ayahuasca, but there's like this one called San Pedro, and there's these medicines that people take in the indigenous areas, right? So that was what caught my attention. All right, so what do you guys, what do you guys think of Cancun? Oh, you guys are talking about Cancun all of a sudden. Oh, mescalito, Alex Brander says mescalito. Yeah, so if you guys know anything about Mescalito, you could you could share it because I was looking on Google, I didn't see nothing about it really, but uh, I've heard about it through other sources. But it's like 
people who take the medicines, like not just San Pedro, but anything that had mescaline, they would get these visions from uh, this, this thing. I've never done it. I've never done it. But it caught my attention because there was a place in New Mexico called Mescal. Uh, no, it's not legal. It's not legal. I don't, I, I've never done it. I've never done it. But it comes from, mescaline comes from a plant, uh, like a cactus. So I, I don't know exactly. But um, I know in the Sonoran Desert or in New Mexico, Arizona, they have a cactus out here called uh, peyote. And so I'm not trying to get into... I'm not trying to get into the whole uh, conversation on here because I don't know much about it, but also, you know, like, I don't know how YouTube feels about it, but um, there's people out here who go to like uh, Joshua Tree National Park and, and do that stuff, or they go to Burning Man and they do that stuff, or they just go down to like Costa Rica. When I was in Costa Rica, they were talking about it. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Or even in Colombia, they, they talk about it, but I don't think I have the I don't think I have the guts to, to go out there and drink some of this uh, tea in the middle of the night with a shaman and like th three other complete strangers and take some stuff that's going to take me to Pluto. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's what that stuff does. Like someone says plant medicine. Someone else has a screen name called DMT uh, uh, breathing. Yeah, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, but I don't know if I'd ever do that stuff. But there was this guy. He was kind of cool. I guess he was born in Ireland, but he lives in. New York and he's like a recovering heroin addict and he was like hanging out in Costa Rica we were in this part of Costa Rica uh, Manuel Antonio was it Manuel Antonio yeah yeah right here so we we're like right here this is a really beautiful place in Costa Rica called Manuel Antonio crazy beautiful man they got like all sorts of wildlife you never even suspect it sloths uh, monkeys Oh, marine they like whales come down here all this stuff but this dude was like down there for two weeks and i guess i think what he was ultimately trying to do was that but he was trying to find the right situation anyway you would have never known he was addicted to heroin for 10 years or whatever how long because he was totally normal he was actually kind of cool you know to talk to but he i think that's what he was down there looking for No, you can't get it off any cactus. Like, I don't even know what cactuses you can get it off of. So I'm definitely not the expert. <laughs> and uh, I've never done it. So I, 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 I couldn't tell you. I mean, but you hear about it. Like, you know, you look it up. DMT. That's the guy who's got the DMT stuff. And someone was saying psilocybin. Um, someone said, did you know California once declared itself an independent country? Uh, wouldn't surprise me, but it probably was, I mean, that's why it's called the Republic of California, right? But it was probably short lived. Uh, I could, I know the exact history, uh, at least according to the, the history books. And I'll tell you exactly what happened. So there was a president, I think his name was Andrew, not Andrew Jackson, but what was the president's name? But anyway, he had a, he had it they, 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 out of Washington. They had this uh, idea to do what was called manifest destiny. And Manifest Destiny was to connect the Atlantic and the Pacific and everything in between. And that's why you had like in St. Louis where they originated the Lewis and Clark Trail, right? The Oregon Trail, because they were heading west and that's where they bumped into Sacagawea. So Sacagawea helped get them. She was on their boat helping them get to the coastline. But what happened was in Sutter's Mill in, Sa in Sacramento, right here is Sutter's Mill, right? So if you just type in Sutter's Mill, they found a bunch of pay dirt. Uh, and the pay dirt, obviously, funny enough, they call it Gold River, right? So this is basically Sutter's Mill right here, this area right here, just outside of Sacktown. And uh, Sutter's Mill right here, just ne out of the Sierra Nevadas. And so they found the gold in like 1942 or something like that. And they, the word got out that there was pay dirt in the Sierra Nevadas. And it was called, um, and, and so they were basically going to mine gold in them, their hills. What were them, their hills? The Sierra Nevadas. And so once the word got out, all these people from all around the world moved. Look at these islands right here. Just off the coast of San Francisco. But um, all these people moved to San Francisco uh, from China, from all around the world. And they were called the 49ers because in 1849 is when the gold rush happened. That's why they're called the 49ers because there was a gold rush that happened. But right before that, there was a war that broke out between Mexico and the United States. And what the war was over, 
There was uh, in San Antonio, there was the Battle of the Alamo. There was a lot of people, settlers, immigrants coming from Boston. Stephen F. Austin from Austin, Texas. Stephen F. Austin was establishing a colony of people from New England down in Texas. And at the time, it was under the rule of the Spanish. And uh, General Santa Ana was the general in this area who was um, had the stronghold. So in San Antonio, they stormed the Alamo. You know, the Battle of the Alamo. Santa Ana killed every one of the settlers in Santa, San Antonio. What happened at the time was there was, this, there was General Sam Houston, because at the time, Texas was also Republic of Texas. Sam Houston was working for the cavalry, and he got the Washington, D.C. sent orders to Houston to cut off Santa Ana, General de Santa Ana, after he stormed San Antonio and killed all the men, women, and children. And they caught Santa Ana down in what is basically the area of Sonora and Chihuahua, and they forced an armistice, a surrender, and they said, basically, the United States is going to take everything north of the Nuestas River. Well, if you dial in the Nuestas River, it's like right here. But Mexico didn't agree to the terms, and they ended up having a war. A young Robert E. Lee was at war. They sent the cavalry and the Navy down to Veracruz, or in the area of Veracruz. They marched into Mexico City, and they put the American flag in the ground in Mexico City after the war between the, the Mexican-American War. And the United States gave everything back to Mexico and took everything north of the Rio Grande. And so they took everything north of the Rio Grande. They also took the area known as New Mexico, uh, everything north of er or this area. They drew the boundaries about maybe like 50, 60 years later for Arizona. And they took California because they wanted California because of all the gold. So they took California, the United States took California from Mexico in the war, the Mexican-American War, which was basically uh, kind of started at this Battle of San Antonio at the Alamo. So there you go. That's that's what it came down to. But the, the main the main uh, person who led the offensive for the United States is the guy who Houston, Texas is named after Sam Houston. But uh, Stephen F. Austin uh, is was another big player in that in that war. But the United States wanted everything north of Nuestas, but after after they pinned the flag in Mexico City, gave everything back, they took the land north of the uh, Rio Grande, and they gave them, like, I think, like $25 million or something crazy like that. But the deal was cut between the United States and Santa Ana after the armistice. There was an armistice or a surrender that happened. And they basically said, we'll take the money, we surrender, and here's this. And now, so, so what ended up happening was a bunch of people who are Mexican, okay, we're living on the other side of the border. <laughs> That's why when you talk to Mexicans, they'll say the border. We didn't cross the border. The border crossed us because <laughs> they were living here. That's why there was there's so many people who are Mexican living in California and Arizona who are actually uh, in this land before uh, it was ever even part of the United States. You know, it'd be like imagine if you were living somewhere and someone uh, just all of a sudden said, uh, "Now you're no longer an American. You are now a." Uh, Californian. <laughs> like, imagine if California just invaded Arizona and everyone's like, now you're a part of California because we just took over Arizona. And you're like, oh, wait a second here. <laughs> That's basically the same kind of thing that happened. In 1846, American settlers in Sonoma rose up against the Mexican authorities who governed the territory and declared the establishment of the independent California. Yes. Uh, but that was short lived. But you're right. Yeah, the Republic of California. That's why when you see it, they have that bear, which is like one of the there's no grizzly bears really in California anymore. It's like one of the last grizzly bears. And um, it's on the flag. And it says the Republic of California. Yeah, but the cool thing about it is the Camino Real. That's why I always get into the history of it. Because um, the De Anza Trail that goes through Arizona right here, like I was showing you guys earlier, it goes right through here. And then at Gila Bend, they cross over at the bend in the river on the Gila. I'd imagine they probably did that because they could take the river all the way to the Colorado. So it was a way to get over. And so they took that. I don't know if they used the ships or anything, but they might have. And then they arrived in San Diego. And that's why you have the 21 missions of California all the way up through, uh, you know, Santa Barbara. They have one in San Diego at like uh, San Juan Capistrano, or uh, let's see, what's the one in, 
Yeah, San Juan Capistrano. They have one down in Old Town, San Diego. The Mission in San Diego. The Mission in Santa Barbara. Uh, San Luis Obispo has got a mission nearby. And, and those are all part of Camino Real, which was Real is road. Well, in Spanish, road is actually caret, uh, car, caratera, I think. <laughs> anyway, it's funny. Um, someone said, is Arizona an open carry state? Yeah, I've seen people. I've been eating at Denny's and all of a sudden some dude just comes in with his, you know, sidearm on his uh, hip, sitting there paying for food like it's just another day in the park. I'm like, why is this dude got a gun open carry? Well, because you can in Arizona. Um, so, you know, it's politics, man. I, no, you don't even need it. So far as I know, you don't need a permit. I mean, things change. I don't know the exact law. I'm not like a lawyer. I'm not like a defense lawyer but uh yeah it's open carry as in you just all you need to do is give them your id card uh they put you into a computer and then within five minutes you're walking out with whatever weapon you needed it's that easy <laughs> and that's why they say when you when you're on the roads don't try and get all crazy with the people next to you because you don't know what kind of day they're having and they might be packing heat and i'm not saying that they're in the right to just go ahead and be like hey you cut me off so bang 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 i'm not saying that that's good but that's why they say don't try to get into road rage incidents, especially in this part of Phoenix. Like if you look at road rage incidents, they almost always happen near Glendale or something around the I-17. That area right there is a little wild. Uh, Victor Yank says open carry means as long as people can see it, you can have it. Yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not like all like I said, I'm not a, a lawyer on this subject. I don't know the exact law, but there you go. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can do, you can do that. Show up says, enjoy having, hearing your passion for the Southwest history. Good stuff, man. Planning to move to Arizona soon myself. Where are you planning on moving to Arizona? Where, where are you planning to move? Someone says, I have a permit. I don't think you need a permit in Arizona. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's one of the only states that does that. Is Phoenix full of homeless? No. The only area in Phoenix that has homeless, by the way, if you're new to this channel, welcome to all the new subscribers. Uh, we've got a few new subscribers. Thanks to everyone who hit the like button. We're at 316. If you haven't already hit the like button, hit the like button. We'll keep going. We're at two, two hours and 16 minutes. We can keep going too. Uh, someone said, uh, is it full of homeless? No, Phoenix is not full of homeless. You have like most of the homeless encampment is down here on Madison Street, which is right next to the Madison Street Jail. Madison Street Courthouse. Uh, so it's like it's just south of Jefferson, but you have uh, Madison Street right here. This is like where the only like real homeless encampment is. And when it's July down there, you're like, whoa, why are people even living here in July in Phoenix down in Madison? I don't know. But I do see them on street corners, uh, pretty much scattered throughout Phoenix, you know. But I try not to talk crap on homeless or anything like that because, you know, it, I mean, it could happen to anyone and you never know their story, right? I mean, that's the whole thing is you never know their story. But it doesn't mean that it's pleasant to look at or it's acceptable. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for the people who have to live in that area where there are people who are destitute and homeless, possibly criminal uh, activity going on and also on drugs. So it makes it really hard to live in an area like that. What is this? Oh, I thought that was a light rail. There is a light rail down through Tempe. Where's that track? So it crosses right here, right? So where's the light rail track? I know it goes through Tempe right here. Just cruise the, just cruise the light rail and most of the people on the light rail are gonna be probably homeless. Probably. Do I like the food? Yeah, I like the food. Where Where are you from, Ashanti? Where are you come? Are you do you live here or are you moving here? Uh, AJ said, no, um, "West Side, Arizona is at the point of basically California 2.0." It depends where you're at. It depends where you're at. Uh, but Calif okay. At the end of the day, guys, we all live in the United States. So, like the problems that are manifesting in California and manifesting in Arizona are not too far apart it's it, you, it's like comparing green apples to red apples it's like they're both apples but they look different right so phoenix and california are both a state in the united states but they are just different 
but the problems that pop up, you know, are similar. So yeah, it's, it doesn't mean it's acceptable. I mean, the problem needs to be fixed for sure. I mean, income inequality, all these different things, you know, you could get into the whole political discussion about what's causing all the problems. But I will say one of the things that people don't realize about California that I know for a fact, reason Los Angeles has such a cal uh, problem or San Diego has such a problem with homeless, what happens is people, when they get homeless, they're like, where in America should I live and be homeless? Well, let's go to the place with the best weather. So they moved to California or Hawaii uh, where they have the best weather. So they go live in Los Angeles and everyone thinks it's because people in Los Angeles created a bunch of homeless or San Francisco created a, a bunch of homeless, but they f fail to realize that if you actually talk to these homeless people, why, where did you come from? I came from Chicago. Okay, why'd you move to Los Angeles? Well, it's the good weather. Year round, good weather. It doesn't get intense cold and it doesn't get intense sun. So that's why Venice Beach and places like that. So it's like California became kind of like the homeless destination. So that's why they have so many out there. But a lot of people think it's all because of the policies in California. Well, it's not that simple. And I, and trust me, I would love to chalk it up to something that simple. Um, Andrew Jones says, I feel that humidity is worse than the heat. Yeah, well, Los Angeles doesn't really get too much heat. They get heat, but they don't get like that incredible heat and they don't get a lot of humidity. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, it's kind of why Los Angeles, San Diego has so much homeless. Talk to the homeless. Ask them where they came from. Don't say, hey, did you grow up? Like most of them, they're not going to say, oh, I grew up in Los Angeles. It's like, yeah, I was just living in uh, Florida and I decided to be homeless out here in California because it's nice weather. I'm just saying. Uh, Jesse says, any good genuinely challenging off-road trails you'd recommend in particular within a couple miles or a couple hours of Phoenix coming through? for work from LA in the next couple of weeks and to have a solid one to two days free. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean the, okay. Okay. So you don't have much time, but a trail that I like to do is the one that's called the Senator trail. You go up from, you, you won't be able to do this one. It's, it's too arduous. I mean, you'd have to be really bold to do this one, but basically just North of black Canyon city, you go through crown King here on the Senator highway and you take that all the way through this mountain range right here. You can kind of see the Senator Highway right here weaving through. Uh, it's definitely off road and you end up in basically Prescott. Okay, so there's that one. But around Phoenix, I mean, and that one is close to Phoenix, it's just a beast of a trail. Uh, anytime you can get out here into Queen Valley and explore any one of these off road trails, like to, to Elephant Arch or any of these trails, those are pretty good. That's in the Superstition Mountains. So, uh, an easy one that, that won't get you in a lot of trouble, but allows you uh, to see uh, enough would be this 88 here going through Lost Dutchman through Tortilla Flat. Unfortunately, it's closed. It used to go all the way up to Roosevelt, but uh, rain erosion cut it off. So you could do the uh, patchy trail. But if none of those sound too interesting, um, we, did, we did the one from Rio Verde through this Needle Rock here all the way up to this highway here. Uh, you kind of come out right here on Bartlett Ramp, Bartlett Lake Dam Road. And, you know, you could explore that little area right there. But that's probably a beast of a trail. You got to have the right vehicle. Um, I mean, we could, we could go on and on and on and on. There's so many. There's so many. I mean, it's just what part of what part of the desert do you want to explore? <laughs> Salvador says, I like the old town of Globe. Yeah, Globe is big time. And they still got mining operations going on there. All right, guys, get us over 350 and I'll keep going. Otherwise, I'm probably going to uh, call it a night and get some food and stuff. But if we go over 350, I'll keep going because that means there's still a lot of interest in this channel. Uh, Bulldog Canyon is fun. Bulldog Canyon. I've heard that name. Hold on. Let me see. Oh. Oh, okay. I've actually never hiked that. Oh. I did Bulldog Canyon up here by the, uh, no wait, I did Bulldog Canyon over here by Coon Bluff. That was, that's a wild hike going around Coon Bluff because you'll see like the wild horses. Yeah. Thanks Ashanti for subscribing. She's, I didn't know, so we got a lot of People who've never watched this channel before just watching right now. <laughs> All right. Peekaboo says, hit y'all, hit like. 
How would you compare Arizona to Hawaii? Hmm. Well, the only part of Hawaii that reminded me of Arizona was Kona. Because it's arid and it's like a desert out in Kona. This area right here. I always thought, well, the Big Island's so unique because they have like seven different climate zones on one island. You know, you got you got uh, alpine, you got desert, you got uh, semi-arid, you've got tropical rainforest, you've got forest. I don't even know them all. I know there's like 12 and like there's a bunch of them on the Big Island. But Kona reminded me of Arizona. Uh, again, uh, Maui had an area called Kihei that reminded me of Arizona. Lanai kind of reminded me of Arizona. I really like Lanai, actually. That's like one of the places I miss. Like the one place is like a happy place is Lanai. People don't even go to Lanai. I mean, you can't even really get there, but that place kind of reminded me of Arizona because it's desert, right? It's, so you see like kind of like mesquites and stuff. I never went to Molokai. Uh, Oahu is just like a giant New York City in the middle of the Pacific. Not really, but kind of. And then Kauai, uh, maybe over here a little bit, but... How would I how would I compare it to Arizona aside from that? Mm, not, there's volcanoes in Arizona, but there are active volcanoes in Hawaii. So it's basically what I say about that. I would say the stargazing in Arizona's got there's some places in, that you like on the Mogollon Rim or uh, up here in the Kaibab. Like the best stargazing that I've seen in Arizona is probably Kaibab right here, Kaibab National Park, National Forest in Grand Canyon, North Rim, or uh, Mogollon Rim, right here. I was looking up at the stars on the Mogollon Rim. I was like, whoa, man, that's a lot of stars. And, I, you know, they call Montana Big Sky, but I was like, no, this is Big Sky. And uh, Hawaii had a Big Sky, obviously, for sun or for stars. For a star, wait until you smell the desert after it rains, says Foxy Dog. Yes, we do get a nice smell. Can you see the Milky Way clearly? The only place I could see the Milky Way, from my perspective, I felt as though I could see the Milky Way in Kaibab. Okay? Uh, one of the reasons why you could see the Milky Way in Kaibab, not just because it's so high up there, but there's not a lot of light pollution. So it's a high mountain range. And, you know, they do build a lot of observatories. I've never actually checked out the, uh, the, the, this one right here, Kitt Peak. So Kitt Peak has an observatory. And I've always wondered, because you can see here's the Kitt Peak Observatory. So I haven't seen uh, the stars from up there. And then they also have another observatory in Graham, Mount Graham. So they have the Okay, some of you guys are, some of you con conspiracy theorists are going to get all hyped up on this. It's the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope. So this is owned by the Vatican Large Binocular Telescope Observatory, you could see. So I'd imagine if they built an observatory like this, the Vatican, that you could probably see some incredible, look how cold it gets up there. That's Mount Graham. It's way up there, man. It's way up there. This is way up there. This one's out by Safford. Anyway, I haven't seen the stars from up there at night, but I'd imagine they're pretty good. But guess what the name of this place is? Anyone want to tell me the name of it? Aha, uh -huh. Ashanti knows. It's called Lucifer. I don't know why they called it that. Actually, because it's light. Lucid. Uh, it's an, Someone said it's an energy spot. So if you guys are into like outdoor stuff and you want like a real off the beaten path kind of place, check out Mount Graham. There you go. Mount Graham. Germ Germain knows. Um, I've never been there actually. It's a hard one to get to. You got to really want to go there because the, the, the closest, I've been to Safford recently. Like I said, it's along the Gila River, but you really got to want to go there. It's not... <laughs> It's not easy to get to. It takes a while to get there from Phoenix. It takes a while to get there from Tucson. And it takes a while to get up the actual mountain. But if that's the only thing you want to see, then go to Mount Graham. Link, what happened? What, 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 okay, I get what you're saying, Link, but say that a little bit more clear. 
My buddy who lives in Wilcox, Cochief, has seen UFOs apparently up there. Yeah. Well, last couple days, actually the last two months, there's been a lot of unidentified flying objects. Now, just because it's an unidentified flying object doesn't mean it's extraterrestrial, right? It's not an E. It doesn't necessarily have to be an ET. And there was one that was up over the sky in Arizona, and it was basically SpaceX launching a Starlink. And what Starlink satellites are, they're a bunch of satellites kind of linked together, and they look like a, like a, a meteorite shooting through the sky. And people thought it was uh, like Facebook was blowing up at the time. Our, our Facebook group, Living in Arizona Now Facebook group, was blowing up with people saying, did you see that in the sky? Did you see that in the sky? And I'm like, what is going on here? What is this? What is this? Apparently you had to be out back at like eight o'clock at night when SpaceX was launching the Starlinks. And, uh, you know, so everyone thought it was a UFO and then it was revealed that Elon Musk company, SpaceX was launching Starlinks. So there you go. Christian Smith says, have you been to McDonald Observatory? No, I haven't. Let me see. You know, getting to these, you, these observatories you've got to really want to go specifically for that and sometimes they're not easy is it the one in texas is there one in texas i know the southern part of texas has or the western part of texas has mountains no i have not i have not been here this is around the area where jeff bezos is launching the blue origin flights that when I went down to uh, Brownsville here, so I went down to Brownsville to go see what's going on with SpaceX and see the uh, SpaceX launch site. And I was like, why did Elon Musk choose this far part of uh, the United States to build uh, Space City or whatever it's called? He's calling it like Space City. Basically, right there is South Padre Island. So, I mean, okay, cool. Yeah, like, does he love South Padre Island? Well, South Padre Island's not like the best beaches, even though South Padre is cool with uh, tourists. But the thing that uh, I found out, or the reason I think he does it, is because the closer you are to the equator, the easier it is to get into orbit. And this is like this, one of the southernmost points in the United States. Because remember, uh, NASA had Houston. Remember Houston, we have a problem. So they have NASA in Houston and then also in Florida uh, at Cape Canaveral. So why do they choose the southern parts of the United States? Because it's closer to the equator and it's easier to get into orbit. But you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, uh, what's the difference of being in Brownsville or being in where Jeff Bezos is right up here by uh, Fort Stockton? I don't know. Someone said, I felt, I feel like the most desirable states are all the Southwest states. Uh, yeah, the most desirable. Yeah, because they're like the least populated at the moment. I mean, the most desirable states in terms of popularity right now, Arizona, Texas, Idaho, Montana, uh, Florida, Florida, Texas, Arizona, Idaho, Montana. That's like the ones like the fish hook or whatever you want to call it um yeah i don't know i mean utah's not you you would think utah could be popular but it's not colorado is another popular place actually wyoming hasn't really done too much i mean jackson wyoming is the most expensive uh zip code in the united states in terms of net income per per individual Tennessee and Alabama. Um, there was a lady that I talked to in Maine and I was telling her that I had gone to all these different places and she was a truck driver, went to all the states. I mean, I haven't been to all the states recently, but I've been to like at least over 35. I've been to around 35 states in the last year. Yeah, yeah, in the last two years or year or whatever, 35 states. And uh, I was talking to her and she was a truck driver. So I was like, oh, you've been to a lot of states because I didn't go to like Missouri or uh, Indiana. I went to Ohio and I went to Illinois, but I didn't go to Indiana. Oh, no, I did go to Indiana, actually. I didn't go to Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota. But I went to pretty much every. I didn't go to Kentucky or West Virginia. OK, or Arkansas. But I went to pretty much everything else, everything on the West Coast. Um. 
Utah just, I don't know why Utah doesn't do anything. Utah is not very sought after. Alice says, I saw the Starlink launch from the Walmart Casa Grande. There you go. I've never been to Nebraska. I've never been to Nebraska. I was going to go to Omaha. I was going to go to Omaha, but I didn't make it. And I was, I went to Oklahoma City. Probably the number one most underrated city in the United States is Oklahoma City. Serious. I don't think a lot of people know that. I was, I was taking a look because Oklahoma City, uh, it's not expensive, but it's very modern. And, uh, so it's not expensive. It's very modern and it's green. So it's, it's got everything Texas. It's like better than Texas, better prices than Texas, more modern than Texas, not as overcrowded as Texas. And so I was like, this place is underrated, Oklahoma City. And I would have never suspected Oklahoma City to be the one that I would have thought was the most underrated. So there you go. Some of you might ask that. And now you guys are like, whoa, Oklahoma City? What's the cost of living? <laughs> but they have this river here called the Red River. You guys know about the Red River rivalry. So that's between Oklahoma and Texas. But there's the river, Red River. you got to cross that in order to get into... So you go north through Dallas, through the Chickasaw Nation. Desert and mountain snow. They don't have really mountains in Oklahoma. Yeah, Utah is like a giant national park. I mean, if you really wanted to go on a great like summer expedition, go to like, I guess you could go to St. George, but near St. George is Zion, right? So they have Zion. I'm saying it right, right? This is Zion National Park, which apparently everyone who goes to Zion loves it, but they don't like the overcrowded. So it's overcrowded. Then they have Moab, which has like all of these other things in Moab. They have Glen, uh, they have the Lake Powell area, Glen, Glen Canyon. They have Canyon Lands. So Capitol Reef. They have Arches National Park. Yeah, Utah's cool and it's close to Arizona. You can get up there. St. George, yeah, yeah. Anyway, all right, guys, I'm out of here too. Uh, uh, thanks for everyone who hit the likes. We almost got 350. If you haven't already hit the likes, please do so. And also, if, to all the new subscribers, welcome. And we'll see you guys on the next one.